Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Heaven Officials Blessing. Audio by Dex San Wu Li. Written by Mo Shang Tongshou. Chapter 16. Clothes redder than maple, skin as white as snow. Xie Lian was startled to find that the young man, although slim and slender, helped him carry his enormous bag of scraps with calm and collected ease. He couldn't help but feel a pang of guilt. San Lang strode forward, already steps ahead of him. Xie Lian made to follow, but suddenly remembered that the old cart driver was still lying unconscious in the cart. He doubled back and tapped him back to consciousness, and repeatedly warned him to not speak of anything that had happened tonight to anyone. Having witnessed his abilities, how could the old man dare to disagree with him? Vigorously nodding his head, he said he wouldn't dream of it. The old man then pulled on the reins of old Huang and hurried home. What was left on the cart now was a rolled-up bamboo mat, which Xie Lian carried on his back. When he looked back again, San Lang was already making his way leisurely up the hill, single-handedly holding the bag of scraps that was slung over his shoulder. Upon arrival, they stood in front of the crookedly sitting Puchi Monastery. San Lang dipped his head in a fit of laughter, as though he had seen something amusing. As Xie Lian approached, he found that he was looking at the, decrepit house, please donate, sign. He coughed lightly and said, see, this is it, and why I said you might not be used to this. Quote, San Lang replied, this is quite all right. Previously, it had always been Xie Lian telling other people, it's all right, it's okay. Today was the first time he heard those words spoken back to him, leaving him with an indescribable feeling. Puchi Monastery's original door had long rotted, so Xie Lian took it down and replaced it with a curtain. Lifting a corner, he stepped forward and said, come in. San Lang followed close behind and entered. The furnishings in this little wooden house could be taken in with a single glance. There was only a long, rectangular offering table, two small wooden stools, a small praying mat. One, and a donation box. Taking the things San Lang had been holding, Xie Lian began unloading the things he bought, the fortune-telling container, an incense burner, a calligraphy brush, paper and other miscellaneous items, before putting them in their appropriate places on the offering table. Lighting up a red candle that someone had offhandedly tossed him while he was collecting scraps, the room became immediately illuminated in light. San Lang casually picked up the fortune-telling container and shook it before placing it down. He asked, so, is there a bed? Xie Lian turned around. He wordlessly set down the, the bamboo mat he had been carrying on his back and then showed it to him. San Lang raised an eyebrow. Is there only one? Xie Lian had only run into the young man when he was on his way back from the town, so naturally he hadn't thought to buy another mat. If you don't mind squishing with me tonight, we can share. He suggested. San Lang said, that works. Xie Lian took the broom and swept the floor again while San Lang wandered around the monastery. Dao Zhang Gurger, aren't you missing something in this temple of yours? Xie Lian had finished sweeping and was crouching down on the floor so he could lay out the bamboo mat. Hearing this, he asked as he spread the mat out, I think besides followers, there shouldn't be anything else that's lacking. San Lang also crouched down, one hand supporting his chin as he asked, what about the imagery of the god? 2. It was only because of his reminder did Xie Lian abruptly remember that he had actually forgotten the most important item the god's image. A monastery without the god's image would not be a monastery at all. Although he himself was the god here, he couldn't be expected to sit on the offering table every day. After mulling it over, Xie Lian found the solution, earlier, I had purchased a calligraphy brush and some paper. I'll draw a portrait to hang up tomorrow. To draw a portrait of himself, by himself, for himself to hang in his own temple, if word of this was to spread to heaven, he reckoned he would probably be made fun of for another decade or so. But to have an accurate statue carved, would waste precious resources and time. So, between that and being ridiculed, Xie Lian would rather be made fun of for ten years instead. Unexpectedly, San Lang spoke up. Drawing. I know how, want some help. Startled, Xie Lian laughed and said, then I must first thank you. But, I'm afraid you might not know how to draw the crown prince of Xianla. After all, almost all of his statues and portraits had been burnt 800 years ago. 
regardless of the few that still remain, not many people would have seen them. Yet San Lang replied, of course I know. When we were sitting on the cart earlier, didn't we bring up His Highness the Crown Prince? Xie Lian did recall such an event. Indeed, while on the road here, he had said, you've probably not heard of him, but San Lang had not replied. Now, hearing him say this, it was a bit surprising. Xie Lian finished spreading the mat. Straightening up, he said, could it be that San Lang, you really know of him? San Lang sat on top of the mat. I do. This young man's appearance and tone while speaking were both quite interesting. He often smiled, but it was hard to tell whether those smiles were genuine and sincere or in mockery of the other party's intellectual disability. Throughout their journey on the road, Xie Lian had listened to him talk on everything under the sun, so he was rather interested in knowing the other's appraisal. He seated himself next to the teen and asked, Towards this crown prince of Xianla, San Lang, what are your thoughts about him? The two of them sat face to face under the flickering flame of the red candles. With San Lang's back towards the light, his black eyes were cast in the shadows, rendering his facial expression to be indiscernible. After a short while, he replied, I think, Jun Wu must have really disliked him. Xie Lian didn't think it would be this kind of an answer. A bit taken aback, he inquired, why do you think so? San Lang replied, why else would he be thrown twice from the heavens? Hearing this, Xie Lian smiled faintly, thinking, indeed the reasoning of youth. He lowered his head, slowly unfastening his sash while saying, this, and whether to like or hate has nothing to do with one another. In this world, there are many matters to which one can't simply explain it with just a, like, or, dislike. San Lang said, oh. Xie Lian spun around, tugging off his white boots before speaking again, besides, if one did something wrong, then one must be punished for it, the heavenly emperor was only carrying out his duty both times. With a noncommittal regard, San Lang said, perhaps. On his end, Xie Lian took off his outer clothes and neatly stacked the folded clothing, readying to place them on the offerings table. Xie Lian had wanted to speak more on the topic, when he turned his head and discovered how San Lang's gaze was locked onto his foot. That gaze looked bizarre. It could be described as ice cold, yet it could also be described as scaldingly piercing. It could be said as burning hot, yet it also emitted cool intent. Xie Lian tilted his head down to look and immediately understood. The young man was looking at the black, cursed manacle wrapped around his right ankle. The first cursed manacle was firmly wrapped around his neck, while the second manacle tightly bound his ankle. The two manacles were both placed in inconvenient areas, with no way to hide them. In the past, if others were to ask about them, Xie Lian randomly made up an answer and said that they was necessary for practicing his art. But if it was San Lang who asked, the boy may not be so easily fooled. However, San Lang only stared at his ankle for a moment and did make any more comments. Xie Lian also didn't want to entangle himself on the topic and proceeded to lie down. The young man also obediently laid down beside him with his clothes still on. Guessing he was probably unused to sleeping on the floor undressed, Xie Lian thought to himself that he should really get a bed. Let's rest, he said. With a light blow, the red candle's flame was extinguished. The following morning, when Xie Lian opened his eyes, he noticed that San Lang was not lying next to him. Lifting his head to look around, his heart suddenly shook. Unexpectedly, above the offerings table was a portrait. The portrait was of a man clad in splendid clothing and a golden mask, wielding a sword in one hand and holding a flower in the other. The vigor in each brush stroke were excellent, and the colors used were exquisite. This was in fact a portrait of the Xi'an Le Crown Prince who pleased the gods. It had been many years since Xie Lian had last seen this painting, so he stared at it blankly for a while before finally getting up. After dressing himself, he pulled aside the curtain. San Lang was outside the monastery, resting in a patch of shade. The teenager spun a broomstick between his hands for fun whilst gazing up at the sky and looking infinitely bored. The young man didn't seem very fond of the sunlight. From the way he gazed up at the sky, it seemed as if he was contemplating how to yank down the sun and stomp it to mush. Outside the door lay a pile of fallen leaves, all neatly swept into a pile. Xie Lian went out the door and asked, did you rest well last night? 
Still leaning against the wall, San Lang turned his head and answered, not bad. Xie Lian walked over and took the broom from his hand. San Lang, was the portrait in the monastery drawn by you? NHN. You drew it very well, Xie Lian said. Although he didn't speak, the corners of San Lang's mouth quirked upwards. Unsure if it was due to the way he had slept the night before, his hair seemed more lopsided and disheveled than yesterday, complete with loose strands here and there, carelessly messy. But in reality, it was also very good looking. Carelessly disheveled but not disorderly, it had a touch of charm. Xie Lian pointed to his own hair. Want me to help you? San Lang nodded and went back inside the monastery with Xie Lian. When he sat down, Xie Lian untied his hair and held it in his hand, calmly and carefully examining it. Even if the palm lines and fingerprints were recreated perfectly, ghosts and ghouls would always slip up on one part. A living person's hair was numerous in numbers and rather uncountable, since each strand was so fine and distinct. Consequently, many ghost and ghouls' fake skin ended up having hair that looked like a black cloud, or with strands glued together like strips of fabric. Or, they would simply just, forego it altogether and just take on the appearance of being bald. Last night, Xie Lian was able to confirm that San Lang's fingerprints and palm lines existed and thus had initially let down his guard. However, when he saw the portrait this morning, he couldn't help but feel slightly suspicious again. How could a normal person know how to draw this painting? But when his fingers gently stroked through San Lang's hair, subtly examining it, he discovered the young man's black hair was smooth and long. Without any abnormalities. After a while, perhaps because his actions were ticklish, San Lang laughed once. He slightly tilted his head and glanced at him from the corner of his eye before saying, Gurgur, are you trying to help me tie my hair, or did you have something else in mind you would rather do? With his long hair down in a loose manner, it didn't detract from San Lang's beauty and instead added a devilish aura. The question seemed to be teasing. Smiling, Xie Lian said, all right, all right, before he swiftly went about tying his hair. Who knew, after he had finished tying his hair, San Lang took a look at his reflection in the water basin nearby before he turned back and raised an eyebrow at Xie Lian. Seeing his reaction, Xie Lian gently coughed again. Before, his hair was lopsided. After reteeing and adjusting it, it was still crooked. Even though San Lang hadn't said a word and was just looking at him in this manner, Xie Lian still felt like it had been at least a few hundred years or so since he had felt this embarrassed. Dropping his hands, he was just about to say to San Lang, come over here, let's try again when suddenly, he heard a loud outbreak of noise coming from outside. Sounds of footsteps came from all directions, along with a few shouts of, great immortal. Xie Lian was startled upon hearing this and rushed outside, only to see many people blocking the front entrance to his monastery. Each one of them was red-faced with excitement. The village chief rushed forward and seized his hand before saying, Great Immortal, to have a living god come to our village is really too wonderful. Xie Lian, the rest of the villagers had already surrounded him, Great Immortal, welcome to our Puchi village and for settling down here. Great Immortal. Could you bless me and let me find a wife? Great Immortal, can you bless that one family member of mine to hurry up and give birth to a child? Great Immortal, I have fresh water chestnuts here. Do you want to eat them? While you eat them, could you also bless me with a good harvest this year? The villagers were all too enthusiastic, cornering him from all sides while forcing Xie Lian to continuously retreat. His heart was crying out bitterly. The old man from last night sure was big-mouthed. Despite plainly stressing the importance of not uttering a word, at the break of dawn the whole village already knew. The villagers didn't know which god the monastery was devoted to at the beginning, but they all firmly requested to burn an incense stick. In any case, no matter which god it was, a god is still a god all the same and praying to them wouldn't do any harm. What Xie Lian had originally expected was that the monastery would be completely deserted without a single soul in sight and that throughout the year, there wouldn't even be a handful of people who would approach his door. Therefore, he had only prepared a small bundle of spooled incense as a gesture of goodwill. Who would expect that this event could instantly sweep his entire stock clean? The little censer was filled full and thoroughly, densely packed with incense stuck haphazardly in all directions. 
The scent of incense permeated the air, and due to how long it had been since he had inhaled such a scent, Xie Lian actually choked on it a few times. While choking on a few mouthfuls, he spoke, Cough, fellow countrymen, I really can't bless you with wealth and treasures, really. Cough, please, by all means, don't pray for wealth here. There may be unforeseen consequences. I'm sorry, please don't ask about marriage either. No, no, I also can't bless you in regards to bearing and raising children. Ellipsis ellipsis ellipsis. San Lang had also stopped minding his crookedly tied hair and sat right beside the donation box, with a hand propping his chin and with the other lazily throwing chestnuts into his mouth as he ate. Several village women caught sight of him, their faces blushing over like crimson clouds before they asked Xie Lian, um, that, do you? Even though he didn't know what they were about to ask, Xie Lian's intuition told him he had to stop them immediately, so he said, no. With great difficulty, the crowd finally dispersed, leaving the offering table now filled with fruits, vegetables, and even white rice, noodles and other items. For better or worse, he had at last received a wave of offerings. Xie Lian swept out the litter that the villagers had left outside. San Lang followed him out, saying, the incense is quite nice. Xie Lian swept while shaking his head. Under normal circumstances, ten days to half a month would pass without a single person coming in for a blessing. How could this be? San Lang asked. Xie Lian glanced at him, smiling, now that I think about it, perhaps San Lang's luck has rubbed off on me a bit. Quote. As he said this, he remembered he had wanted to change the door curtain. Thus, tugging out a new curtain from within his sleeve, he hung it on top of the door. He took two steps back to look it over, when suddenly, he noticed that San Lang had stopped in his tracks. Xie Lian turned around his head and asked, what's wrong? Only to see San Lang staring at the curtain, a pensive expression on his face. Following his line of sight, Xie Lian saw that he was eyeing the spells written on the curtain. This talisman was something he had casually drawn some time ago, and on it were spells upon spells, layering one over another. Its defense was very strong. Its purpose was originally for warding off evil and it could repel the advances of any evil outside, preventing them from entering. Yet, since this was written by Xie Lian himself, would this also work in attracting misfortune at the same time? There was no way of knowing. However, since the monastery didn't even have a front door, it would be safer to have a row of spells drawn onto the curtain. Seeing how the young man stood in front of the curtain, motionless, something stirred within Xie Lian, San Lang. What if, by drawing this talisman, the teenager would be restricted at the door and prevented from entering? Chapter 17. Within Puchi Monastery, Strange Tales of Banyu Pass. San Lang glanced at him, chuckling as he said, I'm leaving for a bit. After casually dropping this line, he turned on his heels and left. Logically speaking, Xie Lian should have chased after him to ask about it, but he had a strange feeling that since the young man had already said he'd only be gone for a bit, then he wouldn't be gone for very long. He would definitely come back. So, Xie Lian took the initiative and went back inside the monastery. Xie Lian rummaged through the things he had collected last night while wandering through the city's alleys, his left hand grasped a metal pot, while his right found a cooking knife. He looked at the pile of fruits and vegetables on the offerings table and rose from his seat. After about an incense stick later. 1. The sound of footsteps indeed sounded from outside the Puchi Monastery. These footsteps sounded neither soft nor hurried, and upon hearing them, one could easily imagine a young man walking in with a casual demeanor. At this point, the items Xie Lian had been holding in his hands had already transformed into two plates. He looked left and right at the stuff on the plates, before letting out a long sigh. Not wanting to look at it anymore, he peered outside and, as he had expected, he saw San Lang again. The young man stood outside the monastery. Perhaps it was due to the blaze of the harsh sun, he had taken off his red outer shirt and had it casually tied around his waist. He only had on a thin, white shirt for his top, with his sleeves were rolled up, making him look rather clean and dexterous. His right foot stepped on a rectangular piece of wood, and his left hand spun a billhook machete. The machete was probably borrowed from one of the villagers. 
It looked dull and heavy, yet in his hands, it seemed light and extremely sharp. Every so often, San Lang would shave off a few slivers of wood from the wooden board, much like peeling rind. When he raised his eyes and saw Xie Lian come out, he said, I'm making something. Walking over to take a look, Xie Lian realized he was actually making a door. The sizing was just right. With excellent craftsmanship, the door was beautifully elegant and had a smooth finish. Due to how the young man seemed to have come from a rich background, Xie Lian had thought he would be the type who could do neither physical work nor distinguish rice from wheat. 2. Who knew he was so quick with his hands? I've troubled you, San Lang, Xie Lian said. San Lang smiled, adding no further comment. Swiftly throwing the machete aside, he immediately went to install the door. Then, he knocked on it a few times before telling him, since you're going to draw a talisman, why not draw it on the door? Wouldn't that be better? Having said that, he nonchalantly lifted the curtain and entered. It seemed that the barrier talisman on the curtain really acted as no deterrence for him, and San Lang appeared to not care at all. Xie Lian closed the newly made door, but then he couldn't resist opening it again, only to close, open, then close it again. Admiring how well made the door was after opening and closing it a few times, he was suddenly taken aback by how senseless he was acting. On the other end, San Lang had already sat himself down in the house. Xie Lian left the door alone and brought out a plate of plain, steamed buns that were this morning's offerings from the villagers before placing them on the offering table. San Lang took a look at the buns. He didn't say a word but quietly started to laugh again, as if he had seen through something. Xie Lian acted as if nothing had happened and poured another two bowls of water. Just when he was about to sit down, he saw what was under San Lang's rolled up sleeve. His forearm had a row of tiny tattoos, and the tattooed characters were all quite strange. Noticing his gaze, San Lang let down his sleeves and chuckled as he said, I got them when I was young. Since he had let down his sleeves, it meant he didn't want to discuss the topic further. Xie Lian understood. He sat himself down before lifting his head to look at the portrait again, saying, San Lang, you draw so well, did you have someone teach you back home? San Lang jabbed at a few buns with his chopsticks. No one taught me. I just drew for my own amusement. Xie Lian asked, how did you even know how to draw the portrait of, the Xi'an Le Crown Prince who pleased the gods? San Lang laughed, saying, didn't you say before that I knew everything? Of course I'd know how to draw it. Even though this was a rather shameless reply, his attitude was magnanimous, as if he wasn't worried about raising Xie Lian's suspicious, nor was he afraid of being further questioned. Xie Lian smiled and dropped the subject. And at that precise moment, a clamor arose from outside. The two of them raised their heads in sync and glanced at one another. Only to hear someone from outside fiercely pound on the door, yelling, Great Immortal. Oh my gosh, it's terrible. Great Immortal, save us. Xie Lian opened the door and saw a crowd of people standing out front, encircling the entrance. Upon seeing him open the door, the village chief called out in exultation, Great Immortal. This person looks like he's about to die. Please, quickly save him. As soon as he heard someone was about to die, Xie Lian hastened to look, only to see that the person the villagers had surrounded was a Taoist. His hair was disheveled and his face dirty. His clothes and shoes were ripped and tattered, as if he had been on the run for many days. It seemed as if he had only just collapsed and passed out here before he was then brought over. Xie Lian said, don't panic. He's not dead. He bent down to check the person's body. During this process, he noticed that the person had carried some objects on his person, such as the eight trigrams and an iron sword, all which were effective enchantment tools. It seemed that this person wasn't an ordinary Zhonghu. Three Taoist. Xie Lian's heart couldn't help but sink at the fact. Not long after, the Taoist awoke before asking with a hoarse voice, where is this? The village chief answered, this is Pu Chi village. That person mumbled, out, I'm out, I finally escaped. He glanced around. Suddenly, his eyes widened before he fearfully said, H help, help. Please help. Xie Lian had anticipated this kind of reaction. He said, fellow Taoist friend, what is the matter? Who should I help? What's wrong? Don't rush, take your time and tell me clearly. 
The villagers also said, that's right, have no fear. We've got a great immortal here, he will definitely settle all your matters. Chie Lien. Actually, these villagers had never seen him perform any godly feats, yet they all seriously believed he was a living god. Chie Lien didn't know what to say either as he thought, to settle all his matters was something impossible to guarantee. To that person, he asked, where did you come from? The Taoist devotee said, I, I came from Banyu Pass. Hearing this, everyone present turned to look at each other. Where is Banyu Pass? Never heard of it. Chie Lien said, Banyu Pass is in the northwest region. It's extremely far from here. How did you get here? That person said, I, it was through great difficulty that I could escape to here. He spoke incoherently, and his emotions were extremely unstable. In this situation, the more people around, the harder it was to speak. With everyone talking at once, you wouldn't be able to speak clearly nor would you be able to hear clearly. Chie Lien said, let's talk after going inside. He gently helped the man inside, then turned around to speak to the villagers. Could everyone please go home and stop spectating? The villagers, however, were all very enthusiastic as they asked. Great immortal, what's gotten to him? Yeah, what happened? If there are difficulties, we will all pitch in to help. Sadly, the more enthusiastic they were, the more they would be incapable of assisting. Feeling helpless, Xie Lian lowered his voice and solemnly said, this, could be possession. The villagers were aghast upon hearing those words. Possession was nothing to joke about. It wouldn't do for them to keep watching, so they all quickly dispersed. Chie Lian, unsure of whether to laugh or cry, closed the door. San Lang was still seated beside the offering table, his hands twirling a pair of chopsticks for fun. He was squinting at that man, his gaze rather scrutinizing. Chie Lian told him, it's nothing. You can continue eating. He let that man sit down, but remained standing himself. This Taoist friend, I am this monastery's master, and I can also be considered as a cultivator. Don't worry, if something has happened, you can say it. And, should there be something I can help you with, perhaps I can lend what little strength I have. In regards to what you mentioned earlier, what happened to Ban Yu? The man panted. It seemed that, after entering a less crowded space and hearing Xie Lian's comforting words, he was finally able to calm down. He said, have you never heard of this place? Yet, Xie Lian replied, I've heard of it. Banyu Pass is an oasis within a Gobi Desert. 4. Banyu's nightscape is extremely beautiful, and can be described as quite a dazzling scenic view. That was how it got its name. That man said, Oasis. Scenic. Those were times from two centuries ago. Now, calling it the Ban Ming Pass. 5 would be more accurate. Slightly perplexed, Xie Lian asked, what do you mean? The man's complexion turned pale to the point it was frightening. He said, because it doesn't matter where one came from, at least half of those who traveled there will disappear without a trace. Wouldn't it be more fitting for it to be called, Ban Ming Passes? This was really unheard of. Xie Lian said, who did you hear this from? I didn't hear this from anyone. This is what I witnessed with my own eyes. Sitting up, the man continued, there was a caravan that wanted to travel through that place. They knew of the evils happening there, and had asked our whole division to escort them on their journey. In the end, his voice was filled with grief as he said, in the end, I am the only one left. Xie Lian lifted his hand and motioned him to sit well and not get too agitated. How many people were in your party? My entire sect, plus the caravan, had around 60 people around 60 people. When that female ghost Zanji had wreaked havoc within the course of a century, what Ling Wen Palace had finally calculated was that the total number of people killed hadn't exceeded past 200. But listening to what the Taoist had said, this sort of event seemed to have been happening for over a century. If this many people went missing every time, then adding the numbers up altogether would render this no longer a small matter. Chie Lian asked, when did Ban Yu Pass first become Ban Ming Pass? The man said, around 150 years ago was probably when it had started, when that place became the domain of evil. Chie Lian had wanted to ask in detail about the murders of his party and about this, domain of evil. But, from the very beginning to this moment, he couldn't help but faintly feel that something was off. 
Right up to this point, Xie Lian had no way of suppressing this feeling of suspicion in his chest. Thus, he ended the topic and began slightly furrowing his brows. Right then, San Lang suddenly spoke up. He said, you escaped all the way from Banyu Pass. The man said, yes. Ah, it was a narrow escape. San Lang made an, oh, sound of understanding, then said no more. Yet, it only took this single question for Xie Lian to perceive just what it was that felt so wrong. Turning around, he warmly said, then, after escaping from such a long way, you must be thirsty. The man was startled, but Xie Lian had already placed a bowl of water in front of him, saying, here's some water, my Taoist friend. Why don't you drink some? Facing this cup of water, an uneasy expression flitted across the man's face. Xie Lian stood to the side, both hands hidden within his sleeves, quietly waiting. If this Taoist man really came from the northwest, all the while fleeing in a hurry, he was bound to be parched and starving. And looking at his appearance, it didn't seem like he had the free time on the road to eat or drink. However, after he had awakened, he had spoken so much and yet had not brought up any requests for food or drink during that whole time. Despite facing all the food and beverages on the offering table after entering the building, he hadn't displayed a single desire or wish toward them. He didn't even cast them a single glance. This really doesn't seem to be a living person. Chapter 18 Within Puchi Monastery, Strange Tales of Banyu Pass Under the gazes of the other two in the room, the Taoist man picked up the bowl of water. With his back hunched, he began to drink it slowly. Through his body language, it didn't seem like he was a man who chanced upon rain amidst a long drought, but rather a man who was hesitant and on guard. Concurrently, as he was drinking the water, Xie Lian clearly heard the sounds of plop, 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 as though water was being poured into an empty jar. Instantly, he realized something. Grabbing the other's hand, he said, stop drinking. That Taoist's hands shook as he stared at him in bewilderment. Xie Lian smiled and said, it's useless even if you drink. Isn't that right? Having heard what he had said, the Taoist's complexion suddenly changed. With his other hand, he unsheathed the iron sword by his waist and made to stab at Xie Lian. Xie Lian stood in place, motionless, before he raised a hand to block him. With a, clang, he swiftly blocked the blade's edge. When that Taoist man saw how he was still firmly holding his hand, he gritted his teeth and yanked away. Xie Lian only felt the arm suddenly deflate, as though it were a ball that leaked air, completely shriveling up before it slid free from his grasp. As soon as the Taoist man broke free, he fled towards the door. Xie Lian wasn't worried because in this kind of place where there weren't any external forces that could obstruct him, even if the Taoist man tried to run ten feet, Rui would still be able to drag him back. However, just as he lifted his wrist, a sharp, wish, passed by him. That noise sounded as if someone had shot a sharp arrow from behind. It immediately pierced through the Taoist man's stomach and nailed him to the door. Xie Lian fixed his gaze upon it before realizing that it was actually a single bamboo chopstick. He turned to look, and saw that San Lan had stood up from the table, his demeanor calm and unruffled. Brushing past him, San Lang pulled out the bamboo chopstick. He swayed it twice in front of him before saying, it got dirty. I'll throw it out later. As for that Taoist man, despite suffering heavy injuries, not once did he utter a single cry of pain. Instead, he silently leaned against the door and slowly slid down. What gurgled and flowed out from within his stomach was not blood, but clear water. It was in fact the very same water from that bowl he had just drunk from. The two of them both squatted next to the Taoist man. Xie Lian pressed down on his wound a couple of times, and felt as if this wound was similar to that of a punctured hole in a balloon with air seeping out from the hole. In addition, this Taoist's corpse also began to change. His previous appearance was evidently that of a robust man. Now, it looked as if this person shrunk and got rid of a whole layer of fat. His face and his limbs withered a bit whilst it shrunk in size, so his appearance now was similar to that of an old man's. Xie Lian said, it's an empty shell. Some demons and ghosts weren't capable of transforming themselves into perfect human forms. Thus, they would think of other ways, creating empty shells. They would use some extremely lifelike materials to meticulously create a fake person's skin. 
More often than now, skins, like these would be referenced off of real people. Sometimes, they would even just directly use a person's skin. In that case, one's palm lines, fingerprints, and hair would naturally look flawless. In addition, for an empty shell like this, as long as they didn't wear the skin themselves, the shell wouldn't be contaminated with ghost aura, so they wouldn't be afraid of those talismans that ward off evil. This would also explain why the talisman on the door didn't block the Taoist man from coming inside. However, an empty shell like this could also be easily seen through, because after all, they were just hollow dummies. If no one was to wear the skin, then it could only move according to the commands it received. In addition, these orders could not be too complicated and had to be simple, like repeated movements or ones previously set up beforehand. Thus, the appearances of these shells would usually appear relatively dull and lifeless, unlike an actual, living person. For example, they would repeat one or two phrases, do the same thing over and over, answer their own questions, or answer evasively. If they had to hold a conversation with people, they would quickly expose themselves. However, in regards to discerning empty shells from actual people, Xie Lian had an even more practical method. Making them drink a bowl of water or eat some things would be enough. After all, the shells were hollow, so they wouldn't have the five viscera and six bowels. 1. When they ate something or drank water, the results would be similar to that of one dropping something or pouring water into an empty jar. You would be able to hear a clear echo, something completely different to a living person when eating food or drinking water. That Taoist's body had completely deflated. By now, it was more or less a puddle of soft skin. San Lang used his chopsticks to poke at the skin a couple of times, before he threw the chopsticks aside and said, this shell is a bit interesting. Xie Lian knew what this teenager was referring to. They had all observed this Taoist man's expressions and demeanor and kept them in mind. Not only did he behave lifelike, he was practically a living person. When he was talking to him, he was able to reply quickly and fluently. It could be said that the person controlling him possessed an astonishing amount of spiritual energy. Xie Lian gave San Lang a glance and said, it seems like San Lang has some knowledge of this as well. San Lang smiled, not much. This empty shell had specially sent itself to his door to inform him of the matter with the Banyu Pass. Regardless of whether the information was real or fake, its goal was to lure him to Banyu Pass. Just to be safe, he ought to drop in on the spirit communication array and ask around. Xie Lian pinched his fingers and calculated that his remaining spiritual energy was sufficient enough to support him through a few more uses. With that, he casted a secret arts and entered the spirit communication array. Once he entered the array, he was met with the rare occurrence of it being filled with bustling excitement. Moreover, it wasn't the kind of liveliness accompanied by busy official affairs, but rather one as though they were all playing some game, where they were happily laughing and giggling together. Xie Lian felt truly amazed before he heard Ling Wen say, Your Highness has returned. How were your days in the mortal realm? Xie Lian said, Not bad, not bad. What is everybody doing? They're so cheerful. Ling Wen said, Wind Master has returned and is scattering merits. Will your highness go and snatch some too? Sure enough, Xie Lian heard numerous heavenly officials within the spirit communication array shouting themselves hoarse. A hundred merits. I've snatched it. Why did I only get a single merit? A thousand. A thousand. Ah, thank you Wind Master. Ha 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 ha. Xie Lian thought to himself, could this possibly be coins falling from the sky as everyone scrambled to collect them? On one hand, even though his merit chest was completely bereft, but Xie Lian didn't know how he would go about snatching some. On the other hand, all the heavenly officials here were extremely familiar with each other. Snatching merits from each other for fun as they joked around wouldn't matter much. It would just be weird if he suddenly took part in this. Thereupon, he stopped minding it and took it upon himself to ask, does anyone know about the place called, Vanu Passes? The moment the words were out, the aforementioned happy and excited spirit communication array still fighting over merits instantly dropped silent. Once again, Xie Lian felt slightly depressed. Previously, when he sent them little poems or secret recipes, it wouldn't matter if the other heavenly officials didn't respond because they didn't send things like that either. 
Therefore, since Xie Lian had sent them, he was indeed like a square peg in a round hole. But, within the spirit communication array, there would often be heavenly officials asking questions in regards to official business. For example, anyone know this particular ghost? Are they easy to deal with? Or, is anyone's domain near here and could lend a hand? During times like these, everyone would provide their own opinions. The ones with suggestions would offer their suggestions, the one who didn't would say they'd ask around if they get the chance upon their return. So, when Xie Lian inquired about the Ban Yu Pass, it could be considered as official business. There should be no reason for everyone to turn deathly silent the moment he opened his mouth, like what used to happen in the past. After a while, someone suddenly shouted, the Windmaster threw another hundred thousand merits. The spirit communication array instantly became lively again. One by one, the heavenly officials began fighting over merits, which also meant nobody cared about the question he had just asked. Xie Lian knew that the matter at hand was probably not an easy one, so he probably wouldn't be able to inquire further within the array. In his heart, he thought the Wind Master was really generous, because a hundred thousand merits in a single toss was quite amazing. Xie Lian was just about to withdraw from the array when suddenly, Ling Wen privately sent him a message. Ling Wen asked, Your Highness, why are you suddenly asking about the Ban Yu Pass? Thus, Xie Lian told her about how an empty shell had sent itself to his door. He continued, that shell pretended he was a survivor that had escaped from Ban Yu Pass, so it's inevitable that he came with a purpose. I didn't know whether or not the things he told me were true or false, so I came here to ask. What happened to that place? On her side, Ling Wen pondered for a moment before she said, Your Highness, in regards to this matter, I advise you to not take part. Xie Lian had more or less expected being told something like this. Otherwise, it was unlikely for this to have persisted for a hundred fifty years without anyone having inquired about it. In addition, the moment he asked about this, the whole court went silent. Xie Lian said, every time a party through the pass, more than half of the people go missing. Is this true? After a pause, Ling Wen replied, it is difficult to speak further on this matter. Xie Lian could hear the deliberation win Ling Wen's tone. One thing he could be sure of was that she must be in a difficult situation. He said, okay, I understand. Since this is inconvenient for you, then there's no need for you to say more. In addition, the two of us never had this conversation in private. After collecting himself, Xie Lian left the spirit communication array. He stood up and with his broom, swept the puddle of fake skin aside while he muttered to himself. Then, raising his head, he said, San Lang, I'm afraid I will be traveling to a faraway place. Through Ling Wen's attitude, one could tell that this was not a small matter. Since this empty shell had sent itself to his door, then it must have wanted to lure him into going, so this place couldn't be anywhere nice. However, San Lang said, All right, Gurgur. If you don't mind, take me along with you. Finding this strange, Xie Lian asked, The journey will be long with arduous sand winds, why would you want to come along? San Lang laughed and said, Do you want to know what's going on with Ban Yu Pass? Xie Lian paused before saying, you even know about this. San Lang crossed his arms and said in a leisurely tone, the Banyu Mountain Pass wasn't originally named, Banyu Mountain Passes. Two hundred years ago, that was the location for the ancient country Banyu. He slightly sat up straighter, and, with his eyes as bright as stars, he continued, Banyu's demonic path is in fact. Xie Lian placed the broom against the wall and was just about to sit down and listen. However, at the same time, a knocking noise sounded from outside the door. As of now, it was already nighttime. All the villagers were scared back into their homes, afraid to come back out by Xie Lian's words of the Taoist man, being possessed. Thus, who could have knocked on their door? Xie Lian stood beside the door and held his breath for a moment, but he didn't feel anything unusual coming from the talisman on his door. Following that, he once again heard another two knocks. From the sound of these knocks, it seemed like there were two people simultaneously knocking on the door. He pondered for a bit before opening his door. Sure enough, two teenagers dressed in black stood outside his doorway. One looked bright and handsome, the other elegant and refined. They were precisely Nan Feng and Fu Yao. 
Chie Lian spoke up, you too. Fu Yao took the lead and rolled his eyes. Right off the bat, Nan Feng asked, are you going to ban you pass? Chie Lian said, where did you guys hear that from? Nan Feng replied, a few heavenly officials were talking about it on the road. I heard you were asking about the ban you pass today in the spirit communication array. Chie Lian immediately understood. With both hands covered by his sleeves, he said, I understand. I volunteered, right? Both of them displayed distorted expressions, as if it were caused by a toothache. Yes. Chie Lian couldn't help but laugh. I get it, I get it. But let's agree on this first, if we come across anything beyond what we're capable of dealing with, feel free to flee at any time. At once, he shifted his body to the side and then invited them inside to fill them in on the details. But who knew, the moment the two of them saw the teenager sitting lopsided behind him, their originally dark complexions instantly turned ashen. Nan Feng flashed inside, scrambling to place himself in front of Xie Lian before he yelled, back away. Chapter 19. Within Puchi Monastery, Strange Tales of Banyu Pass. What's wrong? Xie Lian asked. Sitting, San Lang spread his hands out and also asked, what's wrong? Fu Yao frowned. Who are you? Xie Lian replied, this is a friend of mine. Do you guys know him? With a face full of innocence, San Lang said, Gurger, who are these two people? Hearing him call Xie Lian, Gurger, made the corner of Nan Feng's mouth spasm as Fu Yao's eyebrows twitched. Xie Lian waved a hand at San Lang. It's nothing. Don't worry. Only to have Nan Feng interrupt him with a yell, don't talk to him. What, do you guys know him? Xie Lian said. Quote ellipsis ellipsis quote. Fu Yao coldly replied, no we don't. If you don't know him, then why are the two of you being so? Xie Lian hadn't finished his sentence when he suddenly felt something glow from both sides. When he looked back, he found that the two of them were simultaneously amassing spheres of white light in their right hands. Xie Lian felt a foreboding premonition well up and hastily intervened, stop, stop. Don't be so rash. The two spheres of white light that had risen from thin air sparked and looked incredibly dangerous. It was definitely not something normal people could make. San Lang clapped, as if out of courtesy. Amazing, amazing. These words of praise completely lacked sincerity. With great difficulty, Xie Lian finally restrained both of their arms. Nan Feng turned around and angrily asked him, where did you meet this person? What is his surname? 1. Where does his family live? Where did he come from? Why is he with you? Xie Lian answered, we met on the road, his name is San Lang, and I don't know the rest. Because he had nowhere to go, I had him come with me. Let's not be so reckless now, all right? You, Nan Feng held his breath and looked as if he wanted to scold him, but then he forcibly suppressed himself. He asked, you don't know a thing about him and yet you let him in. What if he had any ill intentions? Xie Lian wondered why Nan Feng's tone sounded as if he were his dad. If he had been swapped with a different heavenly official, or even a different person, hearing someone younger than you speaking to you in this way would have already caused them unhappiness. But Xie Lian had already reached a point where he had long became completely disaffected by any berating and ridicule thrown his way. He also knew that the two of them had good intentions, so he paid it no mind. Just at this moment, San Lang asked, Gurger, are these your servants? Xie Lian warmly said, the term, servant, is wrong. To be more accurate, it would be helpers. San Lang laughed and said, really? He stood up. Conveniently grabbing something, he tossed it to Fu Yao, then, why don't you help out a bit? Fu Yao caught it without even looking. Holding it in his hands, he tilted his head down to look when suddenly, a dark aura erupted from him. That youngster had actually thrown him a broom. His expression looked as if he was ready to smash both the teen and the broom itself to dust right then and there. Xie Lian rushed forward and swiftly took the broom away, be calm, be calm. I only have this one broom. Who knew, just as he said this, Fu Yao released the white sphere of light in his palm. He hollered, immediately reveal your true form. San Lang didn't make any effort to dodge. He remained in his sitting position with his arms crossed, and only slightly leaned to the side. That dazzling white light hit one of the legs of the offering's table. 
When the table tilted, the tableware slid off and crashed to the floor. Xie Lian placed a hand on his forehead, feeling that this could not continue. With a wave of his hand, Rui abruptly flew out and tied up Nan Feng and Fu Yao's arms. The two struggled to get free but were unsuccessful. Nan Feng raged, what are you doing? Xie Lian made the timeout gesture and said, let's talk outside. Talk outside. With another wave of his hand, Rui started dragging the two outside. Xie Lian turned around his head to tell San Lang, I'll be right back. He closed the door behind him, and stood in front of the monastery. He then released Rui, grabbed the sign in front of the door, before placing it in front of the two. Please read this and tell me what it says. Fu Yao, facing the sign, read, this monastery is dilapidated. Sincerely seeking benevolent people to donate in order to renovate it. Accumulate merits and virtue. He raised his head, a dilapidated house seeking donations. You wrote this. No matter what, you are still an ascended heavenly official. How can you write this kind of thing? Where is your dignity? Xie Lian nodded his head. That's right. I wrote it. If you guys continued fighting in there, I would be pleading for reconstruction instead of renovation. Then, I would really have no dignity left. Nan Feng pointed at the Puchi Monastery and said, You don't think that young man is odd? Xie Lian replied, Of course I do. If you clearly know he's dangerous, why do you still dare to keep him by your side? Xie Lian saw that they had no intention of donating funds, so he went to put the sign back down and said, Nan Feng, your words just now aren't right. In the world, a person's dispositions and strange encounters are countless. Odd, doesn't necessarily equate to, dangerous. One would know, to another's eyes, I must seem odd as well. But, do either of you feel that I'm dangerous? Quote ellipsis ellipsis quote. This actually could not be refuted. This person clearly had fine bone structure and the refreshing appearance of an immortal, yet, on the contrary, collected trash all day. It was definitely weird. Fu Yao said, you aren't afraid he's scheming against you. Xie Lian asked, do you think I have anything worth scheming for? As soon as he said that, Nan Feng and Fu Yao were both rendered speechless. This question was actually very reasonable. If a person was being targeted in a scheme, it was usually because of their wealth. But what was sad was that, if one really thought about it, there wasn't anything valuable worth scheming for that the current Xie Lian would own. If one wanted money, he had no money. If one wanted treasures, he had no treasure. Unless someone resorted to coveting the scraps he collected every day. Xie Lian added, besides, it's not like I haven't inspected him already. The two focused their attention on him. How did you inspect him? What was the outcome? Xie Lian relayed the few times he had inspected him to the two and said, there were no results. I've already examined him to this extent. If he isn't an ordinary human, then there can only be one possibility. A calamity class. Fu Yao sneered, what if he really is a calamity? Xie Lian said, do you really think a big shot ghost like a calamity would be as idle as we are? Coming to a village to collect rubbish with me. We're not idle at all. Yes, yes, yes. Up on the small hill outside the Puchi Monastery, the three of them could hear the sound of that young man's leisurely footsteps as he walked around the building. They sounded as though he was content and without a care in the world. Nan Feng dropped his tone and said, this won't do. We still have to think of a way to test whether or not he really is a calamity. Xie Lian needed the space between his eyebrows, saying, then go test him. Just don't go over the top. What if he really is only a spoiled kid who has run away from home? I get along pretty well with this. Kid. Be nice, don't bully him. Hearing the phrase, don't bully him, Nan Feng's expression became hard to explain with just a few words, while Fu Yao's eyes almost rolled to the back of his head. Xie Lian warned them again, before he reopened the door. San Lang's head was lowered, like he was inspecting the leg of the offerings table. Xie Lian softly called, you're not hurt, are you? San Lang laughed and said, I'm fine. Just checking to see if this table is fixable or not. Xie Lian warmly said, what happened earlier was only a misunderstanding, please don't take offense. San Lang laughed and said, since you've already said so, how can I take offense? Perhaps they thought I looked familiar. Fu Yao said in a freezing tone, precisely. 
a bit familiar. So previously, I was probably mistaken. San Lang smiled brightly before replying, Oh, what a coincidence. I also thought you two looked a bit familiar. Quote ellipsis ellipsis quote. Although the two of them were still vigilant, they did not make any more drastic actions. Nan Feng muttered, clear a space for me to draw the shrink a thousand miles array. Shrink a thousand miles was a teleportation array. As its name stated, it could turn the distance of a thousand miles of mountains and rivers into that of a single step. Aside from the fact that every use would expend a great deal of spiritual energy, nothing could be more useful. Xie Lian retrieved the bamboo mat from off the floor and said, draw it here. Earlier, when Fu Yao had entered, he hadn't gotten to examine the interior furnishings. Now, after standing in this crooked, shabby house for quite a while, he was able to see it all. As if his entire body, from head to toe, was uncomfortable, he asked, you live in a place like this. Xie Lian handed him a chair and said, I've always lived in these kinds of places. Hearing this, Nan Feng's movements faltered for a split second before he resumed his drawing of the array. Fu Yao did not sit, his expression also turning rigid for a second. It was hard to tell what the look on his face was. It seemed nine parts blank shock and one part schadenfreude. But he quickly hid this unfathomable expression and said, the bed. Xie Lian hugged the mat and said, this is it. Nan Feng raised his head, took a look at that mat, before lowering his head again. Fu Yao glanced at San Lang on the side and said, you slept together with him. Xie Lian asked, is there a problem? For a long time, neither of them spoke another word, so Xie Lian assumed there weren't any more issues. Xie Lian then turned his head towards San Lang and inquired, San Lang ah. You were halfway into explaining it before you got cut off earlier. What happened to that Banyu demonic cultivator? Please continue. San Lang had been staring at them with a look of pensive contemplation, his gaze dark. Having heard Xie Lian call out to him, he snapped out of his daze and lightly smiled, all right. After arranging his thoughts, he said, the Banyu demonic cultivator is actually one of the ancient Banyu kingdom's grand tutors. Namely, one of the two demonic path masters. If there are two demonic path masters, then it obviously involves two people. Who's the other one? San Lang had an answer for every question. Unrelated to the Banyu kingdom. A demonic master from the central plain, called Grand Tutor Fang Xin. Xie Lian's eyes slowly widened a fraction before he continued on listening. As it turned out, Banyu's people were extraordinarily strong and partial to violence and war, and they wielded great influence. They captured an important checkpoint in the western regions of the Central Plains, causing the two nations to frequently intrude on each other's borders, unceasing in conflicts. Battles big and small erupted frequently. Their grand tutor was skilled with sorcery, and the troops had the utmost faith towards them, willing to follow them even unto death. However, 200 years ago, the king of the Central Plains finally organized an army to attack, utterly flattening the Banyu Kingdom. Although the Banyu kingdom was extinguished, the Grand Tutor and troops' hatred and resentment did not disperse. They remained to haunt the place. Banyu kingdom used to be a state full of greenery, but after it turned into Banyu Pass, it seemed as if the evil energy had corroded the once lush scenery and it was slowly consumed by the surrounding Gobi Desert. It was said that at night, people could still see the lofty silhouettes of the Banyu soldiers, grasping a wolf tooth club, as they roamed the Gobi in search of prey from afar. Originally, this place had tens of thousands of inhabitants. However, all of them gradually became unable to survive, so they migrated away and left. At the same time, the legend, every time someone crosses this pass, over 50% would go missing, began spreading out. As long as they were people from the Central Plains passing this place, they all had to leave behind half as their illegal, toll, human lives. Fu Yao put on a fake smile. This young master sure knows a lot. San Lang smilingly said, not at all, not at all. It's only that what you know is too little. Quote ellipsis ellipsis quote. Xie Lian was unable to hold back a smile, thinking that this kiddo sure had a sharp tongue. He then heard San Lang lazily add on, though, this is merely unofficial history and some ancient tales and rumors. Who knows if there really is such a grand tutor, or if Ban Yu Kingdom actually exists. 
Chapter 20 I A Thousand Miles in a Step, Lost Within a Sandstorm However, Xie Lian said, although what you've looked at are unofficial history and rumors, the Banyu Kingdom does in fact exist. Oh, San Lang said. At this moment, Nan Feng had finally finished drawing layer upon layer of the array on the ground. He stood up and said, it's done. When should we set off? Xie Lian quickly packed a bundle before making his way to the front of the door. Let's go now. Placing his hand on the door, he said, may the heavens officials bless us, all taboos are off. One, and then lightly pushed. The moment the door pushed open, the small hillside and village vanished. What stood in its place was an empty main street. Despite the main road being wide, there were in fact very few people around. Half a day could go by and one would only see a pedestrian or two. This wasn't because the sky had gone dark, but because it was less populated in the northwest to begin with. In addition, since it was near the Gobi Desert, even if it was during the day, there still wouldn't be many pedestrians on the road. Xie Lian walked out of the building and reached behind him to close the door. He looked back again and wondered, how in the world could he have just walked out of Puchi Monastery? What sat behind him right now was clearly a small inn. With a single step, he had traveled a thousand miles. This was precisely the mystical aspect of a distance-reducing technique. A few passers-by walked by, mumbling among themselves while staring at them with guarded looks. At this moment, he heard San Lang speak from behind him, according to the ancient texts, when the moon sinks from the sky, follow the northern star and you would end up seeing Banyu Kingdom. Gurgur, look, he pointed towards the sky and said, the Big Dipper. Xie Lian raised his head to take a look and then said with a smile, the Big Dipper, it's so bright. San Lang came to his side and stood shoulder to shoulder next to him. He gave Xie Lian a glance before he also raised his head and smiled. That's right. For some unknown reason, the night sky in the northwest appears to be a bit brighter and clearer than the sky from the central plains. Xie Lian expressed his agreement with those words. On their side, San Lang and himself were deep in conversation about the night sky and stars, while the two young martial gods behind them found the both of them to be absolutely outrageous. Nan Feng asked, why is he also here? San Lang said innocently, oh, I found the traditions of ancient divination to be very mystical, so I conveniently followed for a visit. Nan Feng angrily said, visit. Did you think we're here to sightsee? Xie Lian massaged the space between his eyebrows and said, forget about it. If he followed us, then he followed us. It's not like he will be eating your packed food, I should have brought enough. San Lang, follow behind me closely. Don't wander off. In a rather obedient way, San Lang replied, okay. Is the problem even about who's eating whose packed food? Xie Lian sighed. Nan Feng, it's the middle of the night and everyone's asleep. Let's just focus on our own business, our own business. Don't mind so much about the other things. Let's go, let's go. Guided by the Big Dipper, the four of them followed the path set straight towards the north. Having traveled through the night, the towns and greenery slowly grew scarce, while the sand and rocks on the road gradually increased. Once the earth beneath their feet ceased to be soil, that was when they officially entered the Gobi Desert. Although using the distance-reducing technique could save them many miles, the farther the distance, the more spiritual energy it drained. With Nan Feng having used the technique once, it would take many hours before he could use it again. And since Nan Feng had used up so much spiritual energy already, in consideration of the need to store some for potential battles, Xie Lian wouldn't ask Fu Yao to use this technique again in order to guard against the unexpected. There should at least be someone with their spiritual energy at full capacity. In the desert, the difference in temperature between night and day was drastic. During the night, the freezing temperature was cold enough to seep into one's bones, yet it was still tolerable. But come daytime, it was a whole other experience. The sky here was incredibly clear and expansive with dashes of white clouds, but likewise, the blazing sun was just as fierce. The group continued to walk, but the more they walked, the more it felt as though they were going into an enormous steamer basket. The hot air emitted from deep within the earth felt as though a day's worth of walking could steam a person alive. Xie Lian relied on the direction of the wind and the vegetation clustered at the base of the rocks to determine the direction they needed to head toward. 
worried that some people would not be able to keep up with him, he would look back every so often. Nan Feng and Fu Yao were not ordinary people, thus there was no need to mention how they were doing. The sight of San Lang however, made him laugh. With the blazing sun overhead, the young man had stripped off his outer robe and lazily draped it over himself to block the sunlight. His languid expression brought about a hint of weariness. With his fair skin, pitch black hair, and the way the red robe draped over his face, his countenance appeared even more stunning. Xie Lian took off his straw hat and lifted his hand to fasten it onto San Lang's head. He said, I'll lend you this. San Lang was stunned for a moment, before he smiled and said, there's no need. He handed the straw hat back to him. Xie Lian didn't want to push back and forth on this matter, so if San Lang didn't need it, he wouldn't insist. If you need it, just ask me. He then supported his hat and continued walking. After having walked some distance, the group saw a small, grey building amidst the yellow sand up ahead. They approached it for a closer look and saw that the inn seemed to have been abandoned for many years. Xie Lian raised his head to examine the sky before calculating that it was already past noon. He was afraid that they would approach the hottest and most trying hours of the day once it was the afternoon. Moreover, they had walked all night. It was about time for a break, and thus, he led the three of them into the inn. Inside, they saw a square table so they seated themselves down around it. Xie Lian took out a water bottle from the simple traveling bag on his back. He handed it over to San Lang and asked. Want some? San Lang nodded. Receiving the bottle, he drank a mouthful of water. Only then did Xie Lian take it back to drink himself. Xie Lian tilted his head back and swallowed a few times with his Adam's apple rolling up and down. The cool liquid slid down his throat and felt extremely refreshing. To the side, San Lang had propped his chin up in his hand and appeared to be staring at the scene, yet not at the same time. After some time, he suddenly asked, is there still some left? Xie Lian wiped the edge of his mouth, where there was still some water, left. His lips were slightly moist. Nodding, he passed the bottle back to San Lang again. San Lang was just about to take it when a hand blocked Xie Lian's hand, the one that was holding the bottle. Fu Yao interjected, hold on a second. While the others watched, Fu Yao slowly took out a water bottle from within his sleeve, before placing it onto the table. He then pushed it towards San Lang. I also have some here. Please help yourself, he said. At first glance, Xie Lian immediately knew what he was up to. With Fu Yao's personality, how could he ever be willing to share a bottle with someone else? Xie Lian also remembered how last night, these two had wanted to investigate San Lang further. Thus, what was in that bottle definitely wasn't ordinary water, but form-revealing water. With this secret, medicinal liquid, if a normal person drank it, there would be no effect. But, if they weren't human and had consumed it, then, under the effects of the medicine, they would be forced to reveal their true form. Since the other two had wanted to find out whether this young man was truly a devastation or not, this bottle of form revealing water held formidable power. However, San Lang only laughed before saying, Gurgur and I can share this one bottle of water. Nan Feng and Fu Yao both looked at Xie Lian who was sitting to the side. Xie Lian thought, what are you guys looking at me for? Tone cool, Fu Yao said, his water is almost gone, please don't stand on ceremony. San Lang said, really? Then, you two first. Quote ellipsis ellipsis quote. The both of them stopped talking. After a while, Fu Yao spoke again, you're the guest, you first. Although he still spoke with that refined and cultured manner, Xie Lian felt as though those words were forced through his teeth. San Lang also made a, you first, hand gesture, saying, you guys are the assistants. You first, or I'll feel bad. Xie Lian watched them put on airs. But when such airs were discarded, they finally got physical. Separated by the space of the table, the three of them fought with the poor water bottle, pushing it back and forth. Xie Lian felt the table tremble faintly from underneath his hands. Thinking the poor table was going to meet its end, he shook his head in regret. His companions fought a few more silent battles. Finally, unable to hold back any more, Fu Yao sneered, since you're so unwilling to drink this water, then it must mean you have got a guilty conscience. San Lang laughed. 
The two of you are being so unfriendly, and neither of you agreed to drink it first. Isn't it more like you're the ones with the guilty conscience? Could it be that you've poisoned the water? Fu Yao said, you can ask the one sitting beside you whether or not the water contains poison. Thus, San Lang asked Xie Lian, Gurgur, is the water poisoned? Fu Yao's question was really too crafty. Naturally, form revealing water was not poisonous. When an ordinary person drank it, it was no different than drinking normal water. Xie Lian could only say, there's no poison, but. He had yet to finish his sentence when Nan Feng and Fu Yao both glared at him. San Lang, however, immediately loosened his hand and said, all right. He lifted the water bottle and shook it a few times. Since you said there's no poison, then I'll drink it. Having said that, the boy smiled before downing the entire bottle. Xie Lian hadn't expected him to be so clear-cut and was slightly shocked by his actions. Nan Feng and Fu Yao were also stunned, both of them on guard. But who knew, after San Lang finished drinking that form-revealing water, he only shook the bottle a couple of times before saying, there's nothing too great about the taste. Then, he swiftly threw the bottle aside, where it made a, clang, sound upon hitting the ground and shattering. Seeing how he had drunk the form revealing water, yet still seemed completely fine with no abnormalities, a look of bewilderment flashed across Fu Yao's face. But immediately, he responded coolly, it's only water. Don't they all taste the same? What sort of difference could it have? San Lang took the water bottle by Xie Lian's elbow before saying, of course it's different. The water here tastes so much better. Upon seeing this, Xie Lian couldn't help but let out a smile. He truly had not cared about the outcomes of this test. Regardless of the results, he wouldn't have cared about San Lang's identity or his motives. Therefore, for the chaos that had happened in front of him, aside from it being amusing, there wasn't much else to it. Xie Lian thought things would have ended here, yet who knew, with a loud, clang, Nanfeng had laid a sword onto the table. With that kind of imposing manner, at first glance, it would have seemed as though he was about to kill everyone at the scene. Xie Lian felt speechless for a moment before he asked, what is it that you're doing? Nan Feng darkly muttered, our destination is dangerous. Thus, I am gifting this little brother a sword so he can defend himself. Xie Lian lowered his head to take a look. The sword scabbard was plain and simple, though the sword itself seemed to have been carefully sharpened over the years. This was no ordinary goods. His heart trembled. Raising his eyebrows, Xie Lian turned to the side. It's actually, Hong Jing. Two, he thought. Chapter 22 A Thousand Miles in a Step, Lost Within a Sandstorm. The name of this sword was in fact, Hong Jing, it was known to be a treasured sword. Although it could not exorcise ghosts or slay demons, no demons and ghosts could escape its enchanted mirror. As long as they were not human, once the sword was drawn, the blade would gradually turn red, as though infused by blood. Moreover, the blood-red blade would reflect the true appearance of the one who had drawn the sword. Whether they were a fierce or a devastation, no one could escape. Young people always had eyes for precious swords and horses, and would look upon it with particular interest. San Lang let out an, oh. Seemingly very fascinated, he said, let me see. He held the sword in one hand, and grabbed the hilt in the other, then slowly made to pull the sword out. Both Nan Feng and Fu Yao's eyes were glued intensely to his movements. The sword that had been unsheathed three inches was dazzling and as bright as snow. A moment later, San Lang let out a chuckle and said, Gurgur, these two servants of yours, are they joking with me? Xie Lian lightly coughed and turned towards him. San Lang ah, I've said it before. They're not my servants. Having said that, he turned back again. Nan Feng then spoke in his usual cold tone. Who do you think is joking with you? San Lang laughed and said, with a broken sword, how am I supposed to defend myself? With that, he resheathed the sword and tossed it back onto the table. Hearing this, Nan Feng's brow raised in surprise. He abruptly snatched the sword and tore it from its sheath, only to hear a metallic clang. Within his hands, with an extra sharp edge was. A broken sword. Hong Jing's blade was broken three inches down from the hilt. Nan Feng's expression slightly shifted, before he took the sheath and poured out the remains, triggering a series of clanging noise. 
What was left within the sheath were the remains of the sword, all shattered into uncountable small shards. Hong Jing could distinguish all kinds of demons and ghosts, this much was true. It was never heard of that something could escape its eye, but it was also unheard of that something could cause it to break into numerous pieces within the scabbard. Nan Feng and Fu Yao both pointed at San Lang. You. San Lang laughed out loud before leaning backwards with his black boots resting on the table. Taking a shard of Hong Jing, he tossed it about in his hands for fun. Before saying, I assume you guys didn't purposely give me a broken sword to protect myself. It must have broken on the way here. But worry not, I can defend myself without a sword. As for sword or whatever other things, you should keep it to use for yourselves. Xie Lian was completely unable to look directly at the sword. To speak of it, this treasured sword, Hong Jing, was originally part of Zheng Wu's collection. After his first ascension, Xie Lian had once gone to the martial god's hall to play and had seen the sword there. He felt that although the sword wasn't very practical to use, it still had its charms. Zheng Wu had then gifted the sword to him. Afterwards, he had fallen, and there had been a time where it was truly too difficult. He couldn't keep muddling through then, so he had Feng Xin pawn it off. That's right, pawned. The money received from pawning it off had been sufficient enough for the two of them to have a couple of good meals, and then, well there was nothing further to add. During that time, Xie Lian had pawned off far too many things, so he had decided it was simply better to forget it all, lest he started remembering from time to time and make his heart bleed. Thinking back, Feng Xin, after his ascension, had probably remembered this sword and couldn't bear the idea of this rarity from his era being left wandering the mortal realm. Which led him to go back down in search for it, before he brought it back. He sharpened it, polished it, and placed it in Nanyang Palace, where it was then brought back down again by Nan Feng. All in all, upon seeing the sword, Xie Lian could only feel a dull ache and had to avert his line of vision. He sensed how the other three were starting to fight again, and thus shook his head before he focused on observing the weather outside. He thought to himself, looking at the momentum, I'm afraid there is going to be a sandstorm later. If we were to get back on the road today, it's unknown if we'll be able to find shelter from the wind. At this very moment, outside the building and upon the brilliant golden sand, the shadows of two people suddenly flashed by. Xie Lian immediately sat up. The two silhouettes, one dressed in white and one in black, appeared unhurried, and one could even say they looked rather laid back. Yet, clouds billowed beneath their feet, indicating their speed. The one in black was tall and lean, while the one in white was a female official with a longsword on her back and a hasu resting in the crook of her arm. The man in black did not turn around, but the female official in white turned back to give them a smile as they flashed past the small building. The smile was as fleeting as their silhouettes. For no reason, it overflowed with a treacherous and strange feeling. Xie Lian kept his gaze fixed outside, which was how he witnessed said particular scene. Within the small building, the other three were only able to catch an approximate glimpse of the silhouettes. As for everything else, they couldn't afford to take note of the details for the time being. Nan Feng suddenly got up and said, Who are those people? Xie Lian also stood up and said, I don't know, but they can't be ordinary people. He muttered to himself for a few moments before saying, You guys should stop playing around, the wind looks like it's getting stronger to me. Let's hurry and get back on the road. However much distance we cover is still distance covered. Fortunately, although these people were at times like bewildered flying chickens or scared jumping dogs, when it came down to actual business, they were all able to collect themselves and get things done. Presently, they stopped clashing with one another, cleaned up the shards of Hong Jing and then left the small building. For some time, the four of them walked head on against the wind. And during this time, they walked for approximately four hours. But the distance they covered this time could not be compared to the four hours they had covered from before. The sandstorm was much stronger than before. The gales, bundled with sand, pelted down on them, causing the exposed skin on their faces and arms to ache dully. The more they walked, the more arduous it felt. With the sound of the wind rushing by their ears and the ever-omnipresent yellow sand making their sight unclear, Xie Lian held down his bamboo hat and said, This sandstorm came about very strangely. 
When there was no reply from anyone after some time, Xie Lian wondered if they had fallen behind. He turned his head back to look but saw that all three of them were still following him closely. It seemed like they had just not heard him speak. As it turned out, the sandstorm was too strong. The moment one opened their mouth to speak, the sound would be scraped away. Naturally, Nan Feng and Fu Yao would not need his concern. They walked steadily against the turbulence, looking murderous. But San Lang was always around five steps behind him, walking neither too closely nor too slowly. Amidst the yellow, sand-filled sky, the young man's expression remained undisturbed, without a single ripple of emotion as he walked with his hands crossed behind his back. Clad in red from head to toe, with his hair in an oblique disorderly dance, he appeared as though he felt no effect from the onslaught of the sandstorm. He remained completely unmoved, moreover, not even his eyes blinked once. Xie Lian had already been hit by the sand so much that his face hurt. Seen San Lang this way, with such disregard for himself, truly made him worried. He said, watch out for sand getting into your eyes and clothing. He thought about it again, and realized even he himself could not make out what he had just said. Xie Lian then went straight to San Lang and helped him secure his clothes and collar. He wrapped him up tightly, preventing the wind and sand from getting in. San Lang was surprised. During this time, the other two caught up to them. With the four of them in closer proximity, they could finally hear each other. Xie Lian said, everyone, be careful. This sandstorm came too suddenly, something doesn't seem right. I'm afraid it might be of some evil doing. Fu Yao said, the wind and sand is just stronger than usual. Other than that, what else could it be? Xie Lian shook his head and said, the wind and sand are fine. What I'm afraid of is if something else was added in the sand. Right at this moment, a sudden gale blew off Xie Lian's bamboo hat. Once it was in the air, the bamboo hat was about to disappear altogether within the infinite yellow sand. Nevertheless, San Lang was deft and quick to react. Shooting out his hand, he reached out and caught the bamboo hat that was about to fly into the sky. Then, he once again handed the hat back to Xie Lian. Xie Lian thanked him and fastened the bamboo hat back on while saying, it would be best if we could find a place to avoid the storm. Yet Fu Yao did not agree. If there really was something wrong with this sandstorm, then its motive could only be to stop us from advancing. If that's the case, then we have even more reason to keep going. Having heard this, Xie Lian hadn't even uttered a word when San Lang began to laugh out loud. Fu Yao raised his head and coldly said, what are you laughing at? San Lang crossed his arms and snickered, deliberately going against people, does it satisfy you to be so utterly unconventional? Even before, Xie Lian had always thought that although this teenager was always smiling, his smile often made it hard for people to distinguish whether it was actually genuine, or whether it was mockery in the guise of compliments. However, this time, anyone would be able to tell that there wasn't even half an ounce of goodwill in his smile. Fu Yao's expression abruptly turned cold as Xie Lian raised a hand and said, you guys should stop for now. If you have something to say, save it for later. When the wind gets strong, it can also become quite frightening. Fu Yao said, as if it could really blow people into the sky. Xie Lian replied, NN, what you said is very possible. Before he had finished speaking, the few people in front of him suddenly disappeared. In reality, the one who had disappeared wasn't them. It was him, this sandstorm had really bundled him up and swept him up into the sky. It was a tornado. Xie Lian spun violently around in midair. With a wave of his hand, he said, Rui, grab onto something firm and reliable. With a swish, Rui flew out. A moment later, Xie Lian felt the other end of the white silk drop, as if it had wrapped around something. Grabbing it, Xie Lian finally stabilized himself in midair with great difficulty. When he lowered his head to take a look, he realized that he had actually been brought to a place that was at least ten zhong. One away from the ground. Currently, he was like a kite, one only pulled along by a string with its center tethered to the ground. Within the onslaught of yellow sand, Xie Lian grabbed Rui as he simultaneously strained to make out what Rui had taken a hold of. He looked and looked, before he finally made out a shade of red. The other end of Rui seemed to be wrapped around the wrist of a teenager dressed in red. 
He had Rui go grab onto something sturdy and stable, but Rui ended up grabbing onto San Lang. CH.21, shortened distance. Xie Lian didn't know whether to laugh or to cry. He was just about to get Rui to try again and grab onto something else, when he suddenly felt the white silk go slack around his wrist. Immediately, Xie Lian was overcome with a sense of dread. This abrupt feeling wasn't because Rui had loosened its grip on the other end, but because something worse had occurred. Sure enough, that shade of red from the ground suddenly got a lot closer. It didn't take long before it was within arm's reach. San Lang also got drawn into the sandstorm. Xie Lian yelled at him, don't panic. The moment he opened his mouth, he ate another mouthful of sand. With the way things were at this time, he had long become used to eating a mouthful of sand here and there. Although he had shouted at San Lang to not panic, in reality, even he had felt that San Lang wouldn't have panicked at all. Sure enough, after the young man had been caught in the air, Rui quickly retracted and pulled the two of them closer together. Xie Lian got a good look at San Lang's face. The expression on the boy's face didn't have even half an ounce of panic. Almost as if he would be able to read a book serenely even amidst the sandstorm, as long as he was given one. In fact, Xie Lian began to suspect whether or not San Lang had deliberately intended for himself to get rolled up into the air. Rui went wounding around their waists a couple of times, tying them together. Xie Lian hugged onto San Lang before saying, go again. This time, don't grab onto another human being. Thus, Rui flew out again. This time, what Rui had grabbed onto was, Nan Feng and Fu Yao. Xie Lian felt both mentally and physically exhausted as he told Rui, when I said not to grab onto a human, I didn't mean for it to be so literal, well, all right then. He shouted downward, in their direction, Nan Feng, Fu Yao. Hang on tight. No matter what, you must support us. Nan Feng and Fu Yao, who were still on the ground below, naturally wanted to support them. The both of them stood their ground, but it was to no avail. The sandstorm was just too wild and fierce. Not long after and to no one's surprise, yet another two shadows got rolled up into the tornado. Now, the four of them were all spinning wildly in the air. Between the darkened yellow sky and the dark yellow earth, the tornado was much like an askew sand pillar supporting the heavens. Furthermore, a strip of white silk now connected four figures within this sand pillar, all of whom ceaselessly whirled about without rest. The more they spun, the faster they went, and the higher up they flew. To one side, Xie Lian ate sand like mad, yet on the other, he yelled, how come you're all up here too? What they saw aside from sand was still sand, and what they heard in addition to wind was still wind. With no other choice, they had to yell at each other at the top of their lungs. As he ate sand, Fu Yao spat in contempt, you'll have to ask this strip of stupid white silk. What's wrong with it? Xie Lian grasped the stupid white silk with both hands and helplessly said, Rui ah Rui, all four of us are counting on you now. This time, you mustn't grab onto the wrong thing again. Go. Carrying feelings of forlorn hope with him, Xie Lian once again let one end of Rui go. Nan Feng yelled, don't count on this thing anymore. Think of another plan. But at this very moment, Xie Lian felt the end he was currently holding on suddenly tighten. His spirits immediately lifted as he said, wait, give it another chance. It grabbed onto something. Fu Yao also shouted, it better not have looped around a passerby again. Better let them go if it did. It came without saying that Xie Lian was also worried about this as well. He tugged on Rui a couple of times, but discovered that the other end didn't budge even the slightest bit. Only then did Xie Lian's heart relax as he said, no. Not this time. The other end feels very heavy and stable. He then said, retract. Going against the frenzied tornado, Rui retracted with great speed. The four figures rapidly sped away from the wind pillar. Gradually, amidst the yellow sand in the sky, Xie Lian was able to perceive the black outline of a semicircle below them. This outline was massive, and was approximately the size of a small temple. In fact, the other end of Rui was precisely coiled around such a thing. And only after they got closer to the ground did he finally see it more clearly, that thing was a giant stone. Within a sandstorm of this degree, this piece of stone was like a firm and silent fortress. 
It was undoubtedly an excellent shelter against the strong winds. During their entire journey there, they definitely had not seen a giant rock like this. Thus, they really could not tell exactly how far that strange tornado had taken them. The moment the four of them reached the ground, they immediately made their way to the other side of the rock that was blocking the wind. Feeling delighted as they took shelter, Xie Lian said, this is truly a blessing from the heavens. It turned out that the side of the rock that was protected from the wind had a hole. The hole was about two doors wide, while the height was slightly shorter than one. But it was sufficiently large enough for an adult to enter, as long as they bent down and bowed their heads. The entrance wasn't neatly made, and was rather crooked. However, it didn't appear like it was formed naturally, so it was more probable that someone had casually carved out this artificial entrance. Once Xie Lian entered, he discovered that the rock was carved out to be almost completely hollow. The space within the cave didn't seem to be small, but it was relatively dark. Xie Lian didn't immediately explore the entire place, and instead sat down on an area that was illuminated by the light streaming in from the outside. He brushed off the yellow sand on Rui before wrapping it back around his wrist. Nan Feng and Fu Yao were both spitting out sand. Sand had gotten into their mouth, eyes and ears, so it was needless to mention the folds within their clothes. Shedding their clothes and giving it a good shake had resulted in a heavy stream of sand and stone. Amongst the four of them, the one that looked the least affected was still San Lang. After he had bent over and entered the cave, he dusted off a few specks of dust on his red attire, but nothing more. This was done more for show and out of courtesy. With the exception of his hair being slightly disheveled and his ponytail being combed lopsided, his happy attitude didn't seem to have been affected at all. In addition, that lopsided hairstyle of his was originally combed crooked by Xie Lian. Hence, even if it became more crooked, it didn't really matter in the slightest. Nan Feng wiped his face twice before breaking out in curses. Xie Lian dumped out the sand within his bamboo hat before sighing, Ah tilde I truly hadn't expected you guys to get blown into the air too. Why didn't you guys use the thousand pound spell? While spitting sand, Nan Feng replied, we did. But it was ineffective. On one hand, Fu Yao viciously shook his outer robe, while on the other he spat, where do you think this is? This is a barren desert in the extreme northwest. It's not like it's my general's domain. To the north is the territory belonging to the second general of the Pei House. To the west is Quan Yijun's territory. Within these few hundred miles, there's no way you'd find even a single Zan Zhen temple. It should be noted that there was a common saying within the mortal realm, a powerful dragon cannot crush a snake in its old haunts. Therefore, since one of them was an official under the deputy general of the southeast martial god, while the other was an official under the deputy general of the southwest martial god, using spiritual arts on a territory that didn't belong to them would inevitably mean that the enchantment in play would be subjected to restrictions. With their current appearances, Xie Lian believed that the two of them were both rather peeved and annoyed. It could be assumed that it was their first time being blown up into the sky by a gust of strong wind, only to whirl around in circles and be incapable of settling back onto the ground. Xie Lian said, both of you truly worked hard. San Lang sat down on the ground next to him. With a hand propped up against his cheek, he said, let's just stay here and wait for the sandstorm to subside. Xie Lian turned towards him and said, looks like that's our only option for now. As powerful as this tornado may be, it's unlikely that it would also sweep up a rock this big into the sky. San Lang said, but it is just as you said before, this sandstorm is indeed very strange. Xie Lian suddenly thought of something and said, San Lang, I have a question. San Lang replied, ask away. Xie Lian said, that Ban Yu Grand Tutor, are they male or female? San Lang replied, have I not mentioned this yet? Female. Xie Lian thought, as expected, and said, when we were resting in that abandoned small inn, didn't we see two figures walk by the front? Their steps were graceful yet odd. They definitely couldn't have been mortals. In addition, the one in white had been a female official. Fu Yao was skeptical and said, it is hard to distinguish whether or not they were male or female just by looking at their robes. Their figure was also taller than an average woman's. Did you truly see it clearly? Xie Lian said, I saw it clearly, there's no mistake. 
So I've been thinking, could she have been the Ban Yu Grand Tutor? Nan Feng then said, it's possible, but there was a person wearing black by her side. Who could that have been? Xie Lian said, that's difficult to say. However, that person was walking faster than her, so his abilities definitely wouldn't be beneath hers. Fu Yao said, is there a possibility that they were the two demonic cultivators other member, the Grand Tutor Fang Xin? Xie Lian said, as for this, I think the reason why they're called the two demonic cultivators is probably because even numbers are easier to remember. Much like how in the ghost realm, there are the four calamities. Even though there aren't four in reality, people went out of their way to gather four anyways. Hearing this, San Lang laughed out loud again. When Xie Lian looked at him, San Lang said, it's nothing, I just thought that what you said is very reasonable. After all, one of the four calamities is indeed just there to make them an even number. Thus, Xie Lian continued talking, as a matter of fact, they probably have nothing to do with one another. I've heard a bit about this grand tutor Fang Xin. They were Yang and Kingdom's royal tutor. There's at least a hundred years interval between their appearance and the Ban Yu grand tutor's arrival. Fu Yao found this to be unreasonable and said, you didn't know the four calamities of the ghost realm, yet you know of Grand Tutor Fang Xin from the Yang and Kingdom in the mortal realm. Xie Lian said, sometimes, when I'm passing by places as I collect scraps, I'd learn a few things. And it's not like I collect scraps in the ghost realm, so of course I wouldn't have known about them. At this moment, the sound of the wind from outside the cave had became a bit weaker. Standing slightly outside, Nan Feng hit the rock a few times to examine the material. After concentrating for a while, he bowed his head and said, why would this rock get a hole of this size dug out of it? He probably thought it was suspicious to see a rock like this here. However, this didn't seem too strange to Xie Lian, so he said, a hole dug out of a rock like this isn't uncommon. The past people of the Banyu Kingdom, as in those who needed a shelter from the sandstorm, like the ones who had been out herding livestock and thus couldn't make it home in time, or those who needed a temporary place to stay the night, would occasionally dig a hole in a rock like this. Some of these holes were not carved, but were blown out with explosives. Unconvinced, Nan Feng said, how would you even herd livestock in the desert? Xie Lian said, 200 years ago, this wasn't a desert. Instead, this place also had an oasis. At this moment, San Lang said, Gurgur. Xie Lian turned his head to ask, what's wrong? San Lang pointed his finger and said, the rock you're sitting on seems to have something written on it. What? Xie Lian lowered his head first before he got up. Only then did he discover that the place he was sitting on was a stone slate. Sure enough, after wiping off the dust, there were indeed words written on the slate. However, they were engraved relatively faintly, so the words weren't very visible. Half the slate was still buried within the sand. The writing extended upwards from the ground, while fading into the darkness. Since there were characters written there, then they definitely had to take a look. Xie Lian said, I'm low on spiritual power. Could one of you cast palm flame and help me illuminate this area? Many thanks. Nan Feng snapped his fingers. Instantly, a flame appeared on top of his palm. Xie Lian unintentionally glanced at San Lang, who didn't seem surprised at the sight. After all, the boy had already witnessed the shrink a thousand miles array. Xie Lian felt that, no matter what either side revealed to each other in the future, no one would be surprised. Nan Feng moved his hand to the place Xie Lian pointed at, and the fire illuminated the words engraved on the slate. The words were very strange, as if they were random drawings and scribbles casually scrawled by children. They were even slightly tilted. Nan Feng asked, what is written here? San Lang said, naturally, they're the characters of the Banyu Kingdom. Xie Lian replied, I'm afraid Nan Feng was asking about the meaning behind the words. Let me take a look. Cleaning the sand off the slate, Xie Lian reached the top row. Several of the characters here were especially large, and appeared to be the title or subject. In addition, the symbols there seemed to repeat many times throughout the rest of the text. Beside them, Fu Yao also called forth some light onto his palm before he asked, you can read Banyu text. Xie Lian said, in all honesty, before the Banyu demonic cultivator had appeared, I collected scraps in the Banyu kingdom. 
quote ellipsis ellipsis dot dot quote is something the matter nothing i was just curious as to how many other places you've collected scraps from xie lian smiled before he bowed his head to continue reading suddenly he said a single word general nan feng and fu yao both spoke at the same time what xie lian lifted his head and said i said what's written at the very top of this slate is the word general he paused before continuing there's another character written after general however i'm not too certain as to what this last character means nan feng seemed to have let out a breath before he said continue to examine them then the moment Xie Lian nodded his head, Nan Feng held up that ball of palm flame. Once again, his hand slightly shifted forward. But with this adjustment, Xie Lian suddenly felt that there was something off. In his peripheral vision, there seemed to be something that hadn't been there before. Xie Lian pressed both of his hands on the slate full of engraved characters, before he slowly raised his head. Only to see, amidst the darkness and superjacent to the slate, a rigid human face illuminated by the faint light of the flame. This face, with both eyeballs looking downwards, was currently staring straight at him. Ah, the one who screamed wasn't them, but the rigid human face. Another palm flame became lit in Nan Feng's other hand. Then, the flames upon both of his palms abruptly leapt upwards, reaching great heights. This finally illuminated the interior of the cave in its entirety. Just now, what the light of the flame had revealed was someone who had always been hidden away in the dark. At this moment, they frantically crawled away to one side in retreat, withdrawing to the very edges of the depths in the cave. Unexpectedly, there was already a group of seven or eight people there, all huddled together in a group, trembling. Nan Feng shouted loudly, Who are you people? The shout reverberated throughout the cave, making the entire place vibrate. Both of Xie Lian's ears were already faintly pained from the ringing caused by the scream earlier. At this point, he had no choice but to cover his ears. The sandstorm from before had been too strong, and the noise pollution had smothered their ears. Now, they struggled to hear each other even when they spoke at a volume just slightly lower than usual. In addition, after entering the cave, they had begun their heated discussion on the topic of the Ban Yu Grand Tutor. Later, they became very focused on deciphering the text on the stone slate. As a result, they did not sense there were other people hiding in the cave the entire time, people who hadn't made a single noise. The seven or eight people were all shivering. After quite a while, an old man around 50 years or so in age spoke up, We are a group of ordinary merchants passing through this area. The sandstorm was too strong and we couldn't keep going, so we ended up taking shelter here. Within the group of people, he appeared to be the most composed and seemed to be their leader. Nan Feng then said, as ordinary merchants just passing by, why were you all acting so furtive and hid yourselves here? That old man was just about to say something when the young man, who looked about 17 or 18 years old, standing beside him loudly exclaimed, we originally weren't acting in a furtive manner, until you guys suddenly burst inside. Who knew if you guys were good or bad? Afterwards, we faintly heard you mention something about a Ban Yu Grand Tutor and something about a ghost realm. Your palm was also able to light fire from thin air. We all thought you guys were those Ban Yu soldiers who had come out to patrol and to catch people to eat. How could we have dared to make a sound? The old man appeared to be afraid that this young man's words came off as too provoking and would anger the other party. He said, Tianxiong, stop speaking nonsense. That young man had thick eyebrows and large eyes, and was born with a strong and dignified appearance. When he got told off by his elder, he immediately stopped talking. Xie Lian's ears had finally stopped hurting, so he put down his hands. In an amicable manner, he said, a misunderstanding, this is a misunderstanding. Everyone, there's no need to be nervous. You can all relax a bit. After pausing for a moment, he continued, we're naturally not some Banyu soldiers. My humble self is the master of a monastery, and my companions are people from my monastery. They study the arts of divination. You are all ordinary merchants, but we're just ordinary Taoists. We mean no harm. Similarly, we wanted shelter from the wind, and just happened to enter the same cave. That's all. His tone was warm and gentle, while his way of speech was slow. Hence, he was able to reassure everyone's emotions. 
After repeatedly explaining and making guarantees, the expressions of the group of merchants finally eased. But who would have thought that San Lang would suddenly laugh before saying, how? From what I see, these merchants can't be ordinary people. They're just being modest. Puzzled, everyone glanced in his direction. San Lang continued, when it comes to Ban Yu Pass, was it not, with every passing, half the party goes missing. Despite being fully aware of this rumor, you still dared to pass through here. This can be considered as being rather courageous. How can you depict them as ordinary? Having heard this, that old man replied, young man, that is not always the case. In reality, rumors tend to be exaggerated, and there have been many merchants who passed through here in peace. San Lang said, oh. The old man said, it's fine as long as you find the right person to lead the way, and don't end up accidentally straying into the former Banyu Kingdom's territory. Thus, this time, to pass through here, we specifically found a local to lead the way. The young man named Tianxiong said, that's right. It all depends on the leader. Us getting to this point is all thanks to A. He helped us avoid so many quicksands. In addition, he had seen the wind pick up earlier and immediately took us to find a shelter. Otherwise, we might have been buried alive by all the sand by now. Xie Lian took a look. The one named A Zhao, who had led their group, looked extremely young. He looked to be in his twenties, and was born with a sincere, honest and handsome face. Appearing to be someone who was quiet and slow to speak, he didn't react much when everyone praised him and only spoke in a stuffy tone, this is nothing, it's all part of my responsibilities. I hope that when the wind dies down, everyone's camels and goods will also remain unscathed. They'll definitely be all right. These merchants' attitudes seemed very optimistic. Yet, Xie Lian couldn't help but feel that things weren't as simple as what they had thought. If one doesn't stray into the territory of Banyu Kingdom, then there would be no problems. If that was the case, did the, half the party goes missing, caravans in the past all refer to the people who didn't believe this demonic ruse and were determined to send themselves off to die. He thought for a bit, before he whispered to Nan Feng and Fu Yao, this situation occurred quite suddenly. However, when the sandstorm passes, let's first ensure that these people leave safely before we head on over to the former territories of Banyu to investigate. Then, Xie Lian once again lowered his head and continued examining the engraved words on the stone slate. He had previously recognized the characters for, general, but that was only because this word could be considered as one commonly used. However, his stay in Banyu Kingdom was an event that happened 200 years ago. Even if he had been fluent in the language back then, after 200 years, everything would have been completely forgotten. Now, having to suddenly pick it up again, he truly required some time and patience. At this moment, San Lang, who was standing beside him, said, Generals. Mound. As soon as he said this, Xie Lian remembered. This last character, did it not have the meaning of mound, grave or tomb? Turning his head, Xie Lian asked in surprise, San Lang, could it be that you also understand the ancient text of Ban Yu? San Lang chuckled and said, not much. It was just a hobby, so I only know a few words. Xie Lian was already used to him replying this way. Ban Yu texts were quite limited, and those who understood it were hard to come by. The word, mound, wasn't a commonly used word either. If it was truly as San Lang claimed and he only, knew a few words, then how could it coincidentally be precisely this word? He said, not much, but Xie Lian was afraid that the meaning of his words was more equivalent to, ask as much as you like, it won't intimidate me. Immediately, Xie Lian replied with a smile. This is very good. Maybe the few words you know are the ones I don't know. Come here, let's look at this together. He gently beckoned him, so San Lang went over. Nan Feng and Fu Yao stood to the side while holding up their palm flames to illuminate the area for them. Xie Lian's finger slowly brushed over each character on the tombstone. Together with San Lang, they discussed in hushed voices as they quietly continued reading. As they read along, their gazes grew more and more peculiar by the second, until they finally turned solemn. The young man named Tianxiang from the group of merchants was relatively young, and young people were always full of curiosity. Moreover, having previously exchanged a few lines with the other party, he had henceforth considered them to be familiar with each other. 
Thus, Tianxiang asked, fellow big brothers, what exactly is written on this tombstone? Xie Lian came back to his senses and replied, this slate is a monument, and what's written on this monument is a general's life story. Tianxiang said, is he a general from the Banyu kingdom? San Lang replied, no, he's a general from the Central Plains. Suspicious, Nan Feng responded, a general from the Central Plains. Then, why would the people of the Banyu kingdom give him a proper mound? Aren't the two kingdoms constantly at war with one another? San Lang said, this particular general was very peculiar. Although the slate called him a general, in reality, he was merely a famous little military officer. Then, was he promoted to a general afterwards? Not at all. In fact, he began commanding a hundred people. Afterwards, he led seventy people, and then after that, he only led fifty people. Quote ellipsis ellipsis quote. In short, he kept getting demoted. To be demoted again and again, to the point one couldn't be demoted any further, this kind of experience honestly felt too familiar. Xie Lian felt two gazes collectively fall on his body, but he pretended not to notice and continued reading the text on the stone slate. At this moment, he heard Tianxiang ask with incomprehension, how can there be an official who becomes lower and lower ranked? As long as you don't make any big blunders, even if you don't get promoted, you also wouldn't get demoted. How much do you have to fail to get to this point? Quote ellipsis ellipsis quote. Tightening his right hand into a fist, Xie Lian lifted it to the front of his mouth and gently coughed. Then, he seriously said, young friend, an officer who continues to get demoted isn't something uncommon. Ah, San Lang laughed and said, that's right, it's quite common. After a pause, he continued, the reason why this particular military official kept getting demoted wasn't because he was incompetent and unsuited for his duties, but because the relationship between the two kingdoms was very bad. Yet, when he was on the battlefield, not only did he not bring back any achievements, he also repeatedly became a hindrance. Nan Feng said, what do you mean by a hindrance? San Lang replied, not only did he try to stop the Banyu soldiers from killing the innocent people from his own country, he also stopped his own soldiers from killing the innocents of Banyu kingdom. Every time he acts to stop innocents from being slaughtered, he gets demoted once. His laid-back manner made the seven or eight merchants slowly huddle together, as if they were listening to him tell a story. They seemed fairly invested, and they also expressed their opinions as they listened on. Tianxiang said, I feel like this military official isn't wrong. It's what it is when soldiers fight each other in battle. But for not letting them randomly kill innocents, isn't this okay? Although this is something foolishly kind for a soldier of his kingdom and not exactly suitable, in general, there's nothing wrong. Yeah, after all, he's saving people, not harming them. Xie Lian heard this and faintly smiled. The group of merchants in front of him were neither the people living at the border, nor were they the people from 200 years ago. Nowadays, since Banyu Kingdom had already been annihilated, people would naturally play down the matter when they mentioned it. They would be compassionate, and even give a few words of praise. And even if one didn't agree with something that had happened, they would probably understand why it had been done. But when it had been a hundred years ago, with both sides up in the flames of war and when hatred took no breaks, the consequences of the aforementioned behavior would definitely not be lightly evaluated as being, foolishly kind. Within the group, only a Zhao was a local. It was probably because of this that he was able to understand it better. He said, nowadays as nowadays, two hundred years ago was two hundred years ago. The fact that this military official merely got demoted already meant he was very lucky. Fu Yao only sneered before saying, how ridiculous. Xie Lian could pretty much guess what he was about to say. Thus, he gently massaged the space between his eyebrows. Sure enough, under the flame that illuminated Fu Yao's gloomy appearance, he said, someone in his position should seek to do his duty. Since this person became a soldier, he should always remember to defend his own kingdom. When dauntlessly fighting enemies on the front line and with two kingdoms at war, it's inevitable to kill. Being this soft-hearted would only cause his comrades to loathe him. Moreover, enemy soldiers would find him comical and ridiculous. There wouldn't be anyone who would feel grateful. His words were also very reasonable, and so the cave fell silent. 
Then, Fu Yao said in a faint tone, in the very end, there's only one ending for people like that, death. And most likely, it would be at the hands of his own people. Having remained quiet for some time, Xie Lian broke the silence and said, yes, you're quite right. He died. Shocked, Tianxiang exclaimed, ah, how did he die? Did he really get killed by his own people? Xie Lian mulled over this for a moment, but still decided to say it, that's not entirely it. On the slate, it says that during one battle, whilst both parties were busy fighting one another, this man hadn't tied his boot laces properly and had stepped onto his own laces. He tripped and fell, and then, everyone in the cave had originally thought that this general must have died in an incomparably tragic yet moving manner. Thus, having heard what was said, they were all taken aback. They all thought to themselves, what kind of death was this? Before laughter broke out amongst them, ha 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 ha, Xie Lian, ellipsis dot. And so he was, trampled and slashed to death by both enemy and friend, whose eyes were glazed crimson from murder. Ha 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 ha, San Lang raised an eyebrow and said, is it that funny? Xie Lian also added, cough. That's right, it's rather tragic. Everyone, let's show some sympathy and not laugh. Especially since we're in front of his tombstone, we should give him some face. Tianxiang hurriedly said, I don't mean any harm, but this is still, a little, ha ha. Xie Lian felt helpless because when he had read up to this part, he had also wanted to laugh a little. However, he decided to not bring that up. Instead, he continued to translate and read out loud. Xie Lian said, in short, although this military official had a bad reputation within the army, the citizens near the border of Banyu Kingdom and the people from the central plains who had been somewhat under his care started to call him, General. Then, they built him a simple mound here and set up a tombstone to commemorate him. San Lang added, afterwards, the people of Banyu Kingdom discovered a miraculous part to this tombstone, as long you kowtow in front of this stone slate three times, you'd be able to turn an inauspicious start to a good blessing in the Gobi Desert. His tone was really too enigmatic and unfathomable, which easily led people to believe him. The expression on his face was also deadly earnest. When people heard this, quite a few had immediately started to kowtow. It was better to believe that it existed than for it to not. However, Xie Lian found this rather baffling and said, ah. Is there really a sentence that said that? How wondrous. San Lang faintly smiled before he whispered, No, I made that up. Since they had laughed at him before, making them kowtow to him now wouldn't be asking too much, right? Xie Lian looked and saw that it was really true. There was already no more text left to translate on the stone slate. He had originally wanted to sigh, but now he just found it funny. Thus, he also whispered, Why are you so cheeky? San Lang stuck out his tongue. The two of them were laughing when suddenly, someone screamed, what is this? This one shout resounded extremely sharply within the cave. Noise vibrating, it made people feel their hair stand on end. Xie Lian looked toward the direction where the shout had come from and asked, what's wrong? Those who had been kowtowing in front of the ancient tombstone frantically got up and fled. Convulsing with fear, they exclaimed, snake. Nanfeng and Fu Yao both moved their hands in that direction. The two palm flames illuminated that spot of the ground from afar. Shockingly, a long and gorgeously colored snake slithered upon the sandy soil. Everyone all panicked, how could there be snakes? Why doesn't this snake make even the slightest bit of sound? It's completely impossible to tell when it had crawled in. When the snake was illuminated by the flames, its body rose. It appeared to be extremely vigilant, and seemed as if it was ready to attack at any moment. Nanfeng was just about to strike it with a palm flame when he noticed someone slowly making their way toward it. The person casually caught it and soon had the entire seven inches of the snake's body pinched within their grasp. Lifting their left hand, they brought it to the front of their eyes and carefully observed it while saying, aren't snakes in the desert something common? Someone with this kind of unscrupulous attitude could only be San Lang. This was the so-called saying, hit them where it hurts, if all seven inches of this snake was pinched to death, regardless of how poisonous its fangs may be, they would still have been powerless. The tail of the snake weakly wrapped around San Lang's left arm a few times. 
At this moment, the distance between San Lang and Xie Lian shortened, and thus Xie Lian got a good look at the snake. Its skin appeared to be half translucent, and one could see wispy strands of black mixed within a bright, purplish red color. This color made people associate it with that of internal organs, which rendered feelings of uneasiness. Moreover, the tail of the snake was actually the color of flesh, and sectioned off as if it had layers of hard shell. In fact, the tail didn't resemble that of a snake's, but more of a scorpion's. Having seen that part more clearly, Xie Lian's expression abruptly changed before he exclaimed, watch out for its tail. He had barely finished speaking when the tail wrapped around San Lang's arm suddenly loosened its grip. The tip of the tail seemed to have become another snake head. After snapping backwards, it suddenly thrust out. That tail stab came abruptly, yet San Lang casually reached out with his right arm and caught that tail with ease. He pinched the tail as if he was holding something entertaining, before he showed it to Xie Lian. Laughing, San Lang said, this tail is rather amusing. Xie Lian saw that the pointy end of the snake's tail actually sprouted a sharp and fleshy red thorn. Letting out a breath, he said, good thing it didn't stab you. As expected, this is a scorpion-tailed snake. Nan Feng and Fu Yao also came over to take a look at the snake. They asked, scorpion-tailed snake. Xie Lian replied, that's right. This is a unique, poisonous animal exclusive to Banyu Kingdom, and they are quite rare in numbers. I have never seen one before, but I've heard of it. With a body of a snake and a tail like a scorpion, the poison is more toxic than the two combined. Regardless of whether one was bitten by its poisonous fangs or stabbed by the poisonous tail, they will all. After speaking up to that point, Xie Lian saw San Lang begin tormenting the snake wrapped around his hand by turning it about repeatedly. He would sometimes stretch it, sometimes squish it, and sometimes he would even wring it out like a towel. By now, San Lang was only a step away from tying it into a bow. After a moment of speechlessness, Xie Lian softly persuaded, San Lang, stop playing with it. It's very dangerous. However, San Lang laughed and said, it's okay. There's no need for Gurgur to worry. These scorpion-tailed snakes are the Banyu Grand Tutor's totem. Opportunities like these are rare, so of course I have to carefully examine it. Xie Lian gave a slight start and said, the Banyu Grand Tutor's totem. San Lang replied, that's right. It was said that it was precisely because the Banyu Grand Tutor could control these scorpion-tailed snakes, for the people of Banyu to think her powers were boundless. This was why they worshipped her as the Grand Tutor. The moment he heard the word, control, Xie Lian felt that something was off. He thought to himself, speaking of control, the scorpion-tailed snakes had always moved in a herd, one that would cover a large expanse of ground. Immediately, Xie Lian said, everyone should make haste and get out of here first. I'm afraid that there isn't just a single scorpion-tailed snake here. He hadn't even finished his sentence when he heard a scream. Ah, one after another, several people all began screaming in fear. Snakes. So many snakes. Over here too. In the midst of darkness, seven or eight purplish-red scorpion-tailed snakes silently slithered out. They emerged extremely abruptly, so it was absolutely impossible to tell which hole they had crawled out from. In addition, they didn't attack, and instead just stared silently at the group of people, as if they were examining what they were. These snakes slithering and attacks were all soundless, and they didn't even have the hissing sounds a normal snake made when it flicked its tongue. They were truly extremely dangerous. Nan Feng and Fu Yao's palm flames shot out at the same time, causing a massive ball of fire to explode within the cave. Xie Lian yelled, get out. No one dared to stay in the cave for any longer and all but frantically fled outside. Fortunately, the sky reflected the beginning of a sunset and that tornado had long gone away. The sandstorm had also died down significantly. The group of people evacuated toward an open area. As they ran and ran, someone said, that tombstone is really frightening. How is it that we kowtowed three times in front of it, yet we still encountered something like this despite all that? Xie Lian thought that it was a good thing they didn't know the last part had been entirely made up by San Lang. But then he also heard someone else say, yeah, the results are relatively the same as worshipping that rubbish immortal. The more you worship, the unluckier you become. Quote. Quote ellipsis ellipsis quote.
For an arrow to hit the bullseye despite being in a place so distant and unrelated, Xie Lian was left with no words. Suddenly, Tiancheng shouted in fear, Uncle Zheng. The elderly man he had been supporting collapsed. Xie Lian rushed over and asked, what happened? The expression on Uncle Zheng's face was filled with pain and suffering. He raised a trembling hand, which Xie Lian caught to take a look. Immediately, his heart sank when he saw a purplish-red color appear between the elderly man's thumb and forefinger, and even the bump from the swelling was already very big. Around the swollen area, one could, with some difficulty, make out a tiny hole. For such a tiny wound, one could surmise that it wouldn't be noticed within a short period of time. Xie Lian immediately said, everyone, check if there are any wounds on your body. If there are, quickly tie the part up with some string to prevent the poison from spreading. He flipped over the man's wrist to check his meridian, but saw a purplish-red strip visible to the naked eye crawling up Uncle Zheng's arm. Xie Lian mentally thought that this snake's poison was incredibly potent and was just about to untie Rui, only to see a Zhao rip off a piece of cloth and tie it around the middle of the, the old man's forearm. It was tied extremely tightly, preventing the poisoned blood from flowing back into the heart. His movements were also incomparably fast, something Xie Lian internally praised. Xie Lian lifted his head. Without having to say anything, Nan Feng had already taken out a medicinal bottle and poured out a single pill. After Xie Lian made the old man swallow the pill, Tiancheng frantically shouted, Uncle, are you all right? A Zhao Ge, uncle won't die, right? A Zhao shook his head and said, if you've been bitten by the scorpion-tailed snake, within four hours, death is inevitable. Stunned, Tiancheng said, then, what can we do? Uncle Zheng was the leader of the merchant caravan. Thus, many of the merchants were also anxious and asked, didn't this young friend just give him some medicine? Nan Feng said, what I gave him wasn't the antidote, and it'll only temporarily prolong his life. It would help keep him alive and extend the four hours to twenty-four. All the merchants felt agitated and at a loss. Only twenty-four hours. If you say it like that, doesn't that just mean he has no other choice but to wait for death? Is this poison incurable? At this moment, San Lang slowly made his way over and said, there's hope. One after another, everyone looked at him. Overcome with happiness, Tiancheng turned his head around to say, Zhao Ge, if he can be saved, why didn't you say anything earlier? You scared me to death. However, a Zhao did not reply, and only silently shook his head. San Lang said, of course it'd be difficult for him to say. If those who were poisoned could be saved, but others might lose their lives as a result, how could one explain this? Xie Lian asked, San Lang, what do you mean? San Lang replied, Gurgur, do you know the legend of the scorpion-tailed snake? It turned out, legend has it that hundreds of years ago in Banyu Kingdom, there had been an emperor. He went deep within the mountains to hunt, and inadvertently caught two sinister spirits whose true forms were that of poisonous creatures. One was a poisonous viper spirit, while the other was a scorpion spirit. These two poisonous beings cultivated deep within the mountains. They paid no attention to the affairs of the world and had never harmed anyone. However, the emperor of Banyu Kingdom wanted them dead because they were poisonous creatures, and were thus bound to harm others sooner or later. So, the emperor wanted to kill them first. The two spirits pleaded for the emperor to spare them a single way to survive, but the emperor was a ruthless man. During a banquet, he forced the two spirits to mate in front of an audience of ministers as a means of entertainment, while the emperor himself and his ministers drank to their heart's content. And after the banquet had ended, the emperor still had the two poisonous spirits killed. Only the empress couldn't bear for this to happen, but she didn't dare disobey the emperor either. In the end, she only picked a scented leaf and tossed it over, covering the two spirits' corpses. The poisonous viper and scorpion turned into evil spirits, full of resentment. They cursed their descendants born after their forced intercourse to remain there forever and kill the people of Banyu Kingdom. Therefore, the scorpion-tailed snakes appeared exclusively within Banyu Kingdom. Once bitten or stung, the poison moved quickly and violently, and one's death would be miserable. However, because of the Empress' benevolent action that night, the scented leaf she had tossed over to cover their dead bodies became the antidote to their poison. 
After he finished explaining, San Lang said, that particular scented leaf is from a plant called the kindred moon herb. It only grows within the borders of the past Banyu kingdom. After hearing this, the merchants began talking one after another. This, this kind of legend, can it really be trusted? This young friend, someone's life is on the line, you shouldn't be joking with us now. However, San Lang only smiled and didn't say anything. After telling this to Xie Lian, he didn't say much afterwards. Seeking proof, Tianxiang turned to face a Zhao and asked, Zhao Ji, are the things the red-clothed Gurgur said true? After muttering to himself for a moment, A Zhao said, it's uncertain whether or not legends and myths are genuine or fake. However, within Banyu Kingdom, the kindred moon herb truly exists, and this plant can indeed cure the poison of the scorpion-tailed snakes. Xie Lian said, in other words, there's only a single way to survive for those who are bitten by the scorpion-tailed snakes. Yet this one glimmer of hope can only be obtained within the former Banyu Kingdom. No wonder there were so many passing merchant caravans and travelers who were fully aware of the saying, with every passing, half the party goes missing, but would still enter the former Banyu kingdom. It was not because they were determined to send themselves off to death. Rather, perhaps if they didn't enter the kingdom, they would just meet certain death. The scorpion-tailed snakes were the Banyu demonic cultivator's totem and thus could be controlled by her. In that case, the appearance of these scorpion-tailed snakes definitely could not be a coincidence. Just relying on the few heavenly officials here would not guarantee the safety of all the people currently present. They also did not know whether or not more scorpion-tailed snakes would appear. Hence, Xie Lian lifted two fingers to his temple and tried to enter the spirit communication array. He wanted to see if it was possible to thicken his skin and borrow a few more little officials. But who knew that his attempt to enter the array was completely unsuccessful? He lowered his hand and felt that it was odd. Xie Lian thought to himself, I shouldn't have used up all my spiritual energy that quickly. I calculated it this morning and I should still have some left. He immediately turned towards Nan Feng and Fu Yao before saying, Could either of you try to enter the spirit communication array? I can't enter it from my end. After a moment, the two martial gods' expressions both became solemn. Nan Feng said, I can't enter it either. In places with extremely strong evil auras, part of a heavenly official's spiritual energy could be affected, temporarily weakened or perhaps even blocked. Xie Lian was afraid that right now, they had encountered a predicament that was precisely just that. Xie Lian paced back and forth for a while, before he lifted his head and said, it might be because this place is too close to the former Banyu kingdom, so the spirit communication array became blocked. At this moment, he suddenly glimpsed an exceptionally dazzling smear of red from the corner of his eye. On one side, Nanfeng and Fu Yao were still trying to enter the spirit communication array, while the other merchants were all busy checking their bodies for small wounds. Only that young man Tianxiang was solely preoccupied with holding on to old man Zheng and worrying. He completely did not notice the purplish-red scorpion-tailed snake that had silently crawled up his back. And yet, when the scorpion-tailed snake coiled up at Tianxiang's shoulder, what its fangs were aimed at wasn't the young man's neck, but rather the arm of the nonchalant San Lang standing to the side. The snake leaned back, and then shot forward. Right before the fangs pierced San Lang's arm, Xie Lian flung out his hand, before he incomparably accurately grasped all seven inches of the scorpion-tailed snake. With the strength of his hand alone, he could have choked the scorpion-tailed snake to the point all of its organs would explode, bursting out in a splatter of guts and brain. However, Xie Lian wasn't sure whether or not the blood and flesh of the scorpion-tailed snake were also toxic, so he didn't want to risk making the wrong move. He was just about to grab onto its tail, but who knew that the snake's body would be so slippery, making it very difficult to grab onto. Although Xie Lian went to pinch it, he only felt something ice cold, round and soft slip through his fingers. And the very next moment, Xie Lian felt a sharp pain, like the prick of a needle, on the back of his hand. Heaven Officials Blessing Audio by Dex San Wu Li Written by Mo Shang Tongshou Don't forget to subscribe to our channel.